All right, here we go. San Jose State won at the toss. They elected to defer. They'll get the ball here. They didn't defer, I apologize. They wanted the football, so here we go. Utah State, Dominic Everly at this elevation, strong kick, and it'll be San Jose State with the football. And I have to say, I, I, I'm happy about that. They just decided to take the ball first. Right. Yeah. You don't know <laughs> what's yeah. going to happen what's if you happen? give it to the other side. <laughs> so we'll get our first look at Josh Love, junior quarterback from Mission Viejo, California. Numbers not bad. See the numbers last week against Wyoming. One touchdown, zero interceptions. Done a pretty good job of that. 13 touchdowns on the season, just seven interceptions. He's appeared in... Now his eighth game of the season. Tyler Nevins is the running back. They'll go play action. And love the deep ball. And terrific coverage, really no chance up the sideline. And just a phenomenal job <laughs> by the defense. And when you look at how this team is, it was DJ Williams on that coverage, but that's what they're gonna have to do because this defense applies pressure. You're gonna have to use the extra blocker and you're gonna need to get into some half boot rolls until you feel comfortable and then you can start sitting in the pocket a lot better. Second 10. Little end around. And the Utah State defense there to gang up on him. Gage Ferguson was the first guy in there. And you can see guys flying around. Yeah, guys are flying around. Oliver trying to set contain, but he doesn't on the jet sweep. Gage Ferguson comes from that safety position and makes an excellent block for a minimal gain. So third and long. And this is one of the things we talked about, Max, with the coaching staff, they, about how do you find a way to stay on the field so you don't get Utah State out there? because that offense is just so fast. This is actually gonna be a running play. He threw that backwards. And they're gonna end up losing a yard on the series. It's gonna bring up fourth and 11. And we talked about this offense moving at a high pace. Let's take another look and see how fast this defense flows to the ball. Once they are, they're all looking at the ball, IDing, and then you see them with the closing speed and that's going to be tough. They're going to have to watch this the entire day because this team rotates a lot of players. Bryce Crawford to punt. Not a great punt. Let's see what kind of bounce he gets. It is, does take a nice Spartan roll and no chance at a return. 46 yards on the punt for Crawford. Oh, flag down. There is a flag back near the line of scrimmage. Callum McNeil there, today's referee. We hope to see as little as possible from him all day. Yes. Agreed? <laughs> okay. Agreed. Cool. Agreed. Get some mulligan right now. Personal foul, face mask, number 10, kicking team. 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the kick on that first down. It's Trey Walker, one of the receivers. So now, even better field position for Utah State. We're racking up the yards, 14th in America in yards per game. Four games with over 598 yards. Most yards ever in a single game came just a few weeks ago, 704 yards. And the guy who's running it, orchestrating it, is sophomore quarterback Jordan Love from Bakersfield, California. Darwin Thompson gets the start. And a muffed exchange and a rare negative play for Utah State. If you could have seen the look on Max Stark's face, you'd know how surprised we were by that outcome. That does not happen with this team. It's high octane and it's very efficient. And a flag is down. They will get on the ball so quickly. Ball start, number 52 offense. Five yard penalty, replay, second down. No. To put in perspective how good their offense has been, the school record for touchdowns in a season is 60, and they have 58 right now. With three regular season games left, if they win out, they will host the Mountain West title game here, so that's 
a fourth game, and then they're going to go to a bowl game. So yeah, they're going to put up numbers that may never be seen again. No, no. And the records that they're breaking are, are at a breakneck pace. Vaughn's the ball carrier. And Vaughn's just a couple yards on the play. So third down coming up. And, you know, they don't have third down very often, but this will tell you a lot about their offense. They are converting 47% of their third downs. And coach would argue that that's a, that's a little bit below what he's expecting. He's expecting 50%. <laughs> yeah. But when you have as many drives that they have, that's very tough to keep pace with. Right, and you got to include that there's sometimes drives at the end of a half or the end of a game where you're not trying to get a first down. Exactly. Fourth quarters. <laughs> and that is complete to Tarver. Now it's going to be fourth and three. Do you punt it here and pin him deep, or do you go for it? I would say I'd like to see them punt it just because you pin them deep. You, you, you had two you had two really bad things start happen. You had a fumble on the first play, and then you have a false start. So the fact that they got out of that and in midfield, I think, yeah, punt them deep. You know you're going to get the ball back with the way your defense is playing. Taylor Hintz is in. Ty Cottrell is deep. Patrell waiting at his 10-yard line. Oh, and Hintz has a hard time with it. Now he just tries to toe bash it. San Jose State picks it up, and they're going to take it for six touchdown Spartans. What a start for San Jose State as Trey Jenkins, a safety in the right place at the right time, scoop and score. What an amazing uh, turn of events. Let's look at the replay here. Ball comes in a little low, hence he doesn't know what to do. He's like, I want to pass it, but there's nobody out in like a real coverage and you can't signal to it. So he tries the pooch kick. It goes on the ground, scoop and score for San Jose State. And this is a team that does not give up first quarter points yep. in Utah State. So this is an aberration that you're seeing right now. Matt Wells must be like, come on. Had he not initially looked to throw, he had enough time to kick it. Yeah, he, he did. Had he not thought of that, I think he panicked. And for Brandon Potter, you got to get the ball up. All right, let's go to Danny. Well, this high-powered Utah State offense will get another chance now. You know, they're led by offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach David Yost. And this, this offense is hard to define. They're not just a run offense or a passing offense. They do both. And that's a testament to Coach Yost. Prior to Utah State, he was at University of Oregon, and that offense was ranked in the top 32 nationally in both passing yards and rushing yards. And he told us this week, he said, you know, he had nine starters return for this season. So when he stepped into practice, regular season practice, it was like, practice number 97 he said spring practices were like a continuation of ball practice and then his first day of actual practice felt like they guys the guys already knew what was going on which is why they've been able to have such chunk yardage plays they are the only fbs team this year to have 500 plus yards passing and 400 plus yards rushing in separate games it's like they flip flop one game they have a lot of passing yards in the next game it's the 400 rushing yards it's very interesting and you know what coach Joe said that the players are really unselfish about it that the, the wide receivers the tight ends they keep uh, they block the running backs pass protect they aren't worried about the numbers so I want to know in the comment section do you think today it's early on but do you think today for the Aggies it's going to be all about the pass or the run in this one let me know in the comments and also keep your eye out for Facebook play of the game and Facebook player of the game we will ask that on a little bit later on in this broadcast so keep your eyes out great stuff Danny what a crazy start to this football game, Max. I mean, I wasn't sure San Jose State would score a touchdown in the first half, frankly, but they take advantage of the muff on the special teams. They get the touchdown. That should give them some confidence. But, boy, I think it's just delaying the inevitable because now I think Utah State's going to be wide awake. Yeah, we, we are on the mountains. I don't see snow up there, but there could, there could be an onslaught coming <laughs> soon. But when you look at this, 
we talked about how great all three phases work together. Defense looked great getting San Jose State off the field, but offense having those two snafus on their first two plays and then special teams. Yeah. So Matt Wells not happy being as involved as he is with the special teams. He's going to look to want to make sure these guys look a lot better this next series. Bryce Crawford the kick. Scarver from the one. Scarver is one of the elite return men in America. Trying to get to the edge, and he'll be taken down at the 32-yard line. 31-yard return. There's Brett Brennan, second year at San Jose State. You see the record, and he knew he had a major rebuild to go through. So no surprise that it's taken a few, few games, couple of seasons. They certainly hope that next year there'll be more wins. All right, so back to Jordan Love and the Utah State offense. Coming off a very uncharacteristic start. Successful give to Thompson and no place to go. The Spartan defense is up there. Boogie Roberts, their outstanding defensive tackle in there. And a great job going up against Quinn Ficklin, taking it through the backside A gap between Ficklin and uh, Castaneda. And a flag prior to the second down play. Prior to the snap, false start, number 72 offense, five-yard penalty, replay second down. That's on Alfred Edwards, and the sloppy start continues for the Aggies. It does, and that's the second, uh, you know, false start penalty on the offensive line. Offensive line we give a lot of praise to in the open. I mean, this is very similar to their opening series where they didn't get, they had a muff on first down, then they had a false start penalty. And these guys... They need to wake up. Jordan Love. And Dax Raymond makes the catch. He's going to be a little shy of the first down. It's going to bring up third and short. Gain of 14. Dax Raymond, a terrific tight end. He's battled through some injuries this year. Yeah, Preseason uh, All-Mountain West yep. uh, honorable mention. So he, he, he's a great asset for this team. Third and short. It's Thompson. Gets the first first down of the day for the Aggies, and we'll see if that gets him going. And Quinn Ficklin, just a great job on Boogie Roberts and coming down and blocking on the defensive end. Thompson, another carry. Bryson Bridges brings him down. So you've heard me already say for San Jose State, the names Boogie Roberts and Bryson Bridges. Those are those two seniors up front defensively, the leaders of the San Jose State defense. Love the pump fake. Going to run away for some trouble. Flag is down. The throw down field, and he missed a wide open Jordan Nathan. But I think it would have come back anyway. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be a holding on Sean Taylor, the right tackle for Utah State. Kind of kind of went for the three-point takedown move uh, on the defensive end towards the end of that. <laughs> Cade Hill, excuse me, Cade Hall was bringing pressure there. Holding, number 92, offense, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. I would say 52, not 92. Yeah, uh, 92, I'd number. be pretty surprised. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> yeah, that's three points. That's three points. They take the lead uh, in the wrestling match. <laughs> second, I'm calling it second and 16. Yep. One thing I can tell you, I was here about a month ago, and they got off to a rough start against UNLV. They were down 7-0 in that game, but let me tell you, by the time it was <laughs> halftime, it was no longer a game. Jordan Love looking, looking, and that's almost picked off. Great instincts by Jonathan Leonard at the safety yeah. position. And the interesting thing is, so they went with the motion, they motioned over, and then they had... Raymond sitting in that kind of little slot running a little quick hook route and then they were looking for that that over and yeah Leonard did not bite on the on the play actually. and Jordan Love he didn't he didn't should have messed with him with his eyes he was locked in too early on that one yeah, that made it easy in. for Leonard to, to find it yeah he, he usually want to at the quarter position this is why he's a sophomore look off the left and then come back to the right Love looking looking now we'll throw in Tarver who's Held and there is a flag. Dakari Monroe is one of the best corners in the Mountain West. He was there in coverage. They love this guy. Third in America in passes defended, 1.9 per game. That that that's a staggering number, and he's a senior. Pass interference, number 19, defense. 
15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. What a fun matchup to watch all day though, having Tarver go against Monroe. Yeah, playing in that man role because this is going to be a big match and the replay didn't catch where the hold actually happened. It happened about a half a second before that and it was, it was actually pretty pronounced. It was a very easy call for the referee. First and 10 for the Aggies. Gerald Bright in the game at running back. Bright has the football running to his left, and the Spartans do a nice job. And you see Boogie Roberts, number eight, fifth-year senior, and he just kept going down the line there, Max, and found the ball carrier. Yeah, we call that strafing. When you, when you just shuffle down the line, eyes in the backfield, watching the handoff. Great job by a veteran. Love on second and eight, and here come the Aggies. Inside the 10, the five, touchdown Aggies. Jordan Nathan gets the six. And Nathan playing that inside slot. Just, you know, he's a short guy. He kind of just weaves in between the defenders. And then after that, he just uses Raymond as a, as a convoy blocker all the way to the end zone. But that's what you can expect from this Utah State team. Explosive plays, and they get in the end zone pretty quickly. Extra point is good. Game deadlocked at seven. And we told you it's a quick strike offense. That was a fairly time-consuming drive by their standards, but they get the big play and the touchdown. Seven-play drive, 68 yards, two minutes and 16 seconds. And really, the reason why it was slow, you had you had that uh, you had that uh, little slowness. Let's toss to Danny down on the sideline. Well, as San Jose State's offense takes this field, this I want to talk a little bit more about a guy you gave some praise to in the open, and as well you should. That's tight end Josh Oliver. He's having. A phenomenal senior season, one of the best seasons ever by a Spartan tight end. In fact, he's going to become the second, o the second only Spartan tight end to haul in 50 receptions in a season. He's also going to be the fourth to haul in 100 uh, receptions in his career as a San Jose Spartan. But also, I want to take a look at him nationally because some of his national numbers are pretty crazy too. He's caught more passes than any other FBS tight end in the nation, and he's in the top 50 nationally in receptions per game. When preparing for this game, we asked Utah State's defensive coordinator, Keith Patterson, what the key was to stopping the Spartans offense. His first answer, stop Josh Oliver, and it makes total sense. Guys, he's a first down machine. Just about 70% of his receptions end up in first downs. And it's not a huge surprise because guess who his roommate is? Yep, quarterback Josh Love. The two of them live in a house together with two other football players. You know that's where that chemistry is building, guys. Thank you very much, Danny. So far, the weather is cooperating, Danny. Able to smile without those, you know, those forced cold smiles where your jaw's <laughs> clenching. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is actually really nice weather. A beautiful fall afternoon in Logan, Utah. All right, game tied at seven. What, it, what, what are your, some uh, initial thoughts on what we've seen so far, Max? Uh, defense doing a great job as normal. They've only been on the field for one drive, but you saw the offense finally kind of wake up. I felt like they were in a, like in a fog. I think they were kind yep. of celebrating the senior day and the emotion. Kind of got the best of them. Two false starts. You have the fumble punt, which leads to a return touchdown. But now we, you've seen a glimpse of what this Aggie offense is going to look like for the rest of the contest. Quick strike, very fast tempo on the ball. And, you know, for special teams, a great return by Nathan to start out to start out their drive and put them back out in the 30. So starting to see this team finally sitting in to uh, their normal routine. Ziegler decides not to try to return it. Get a look at the Spartan offense. Josh Love so far, two for three, but it's for negative two yards. So it seems to me that the number one thing you can do if you're San Jose State is try to take some time off the clock here. How do you run the football when on the season you're only averaging 66 yards per game on the ground? Uh, it's going to be having that quick horizontal game and getting Josh Oliver into those cracks in the defense. 
They're looking for Oliver here, and the pressure was coming. Rockamore, one of their outstanding defensive players, number three, was bringing the pressure. Yeah, and, you know, this team plays at that kind of high efficiency, three, four, and they bring Rockmore off the slot to apply pressure because Jordan Oliver had a step on the defender, but uh, when that pressure's in your face, he kind of floats it past Oliver. Nevins and Nevins avoids one tackle and then buried by Christopher Unga. About four yards behind the line of scrimmage. And Unga, a big leader at the nose tackle position, gets pressure and beats out Hoppy and then just accelerates. You don't often see a nose guard make a tackle on a, on a wide sweep like that. Unga now with two and a half tackles for a loss. There you see the numbers there for Leilula. Absolutely no chance. Nalei, the TCU transfer, he is just a stud coming from the outside. And he knocks that pass down on for San Jose State to punt. Yeah, Tipa uh, at, the, at that defensive end, outside linebacker hybrid position. They change based on who their opponent is, but he's the in man rusher. And he's done a great job this season, five and a half sacks on the season. So he's been in the backfield a lot for the Aggie defense. They come to block it, they don't get it. San Jose State downs it at the Utah State 36-yard line, 44-yard punt, and let's go to Dan. First of all, I just want to remind our viewers to get involved here. Make sure you're commenting and make sure you're posting photos on Instagram where you're watching this game, who you're watching the game with using that hashtag SJSU versus USU. Quinn Fickens is getting a lot of love. His family here posting for senior day with that military appreciation helmet. He's also got his niece watching uh, elsewhere as well. So thanks so much for posting those photos. You know, with all this talk about the Utah State's offense, it's the defense that gets overlooked, and they are doing a phenomenal job. Keith Patterson really has led this unit. He's had nine returning starters as well, just like the offense did, and that's really been able to show that success. You know, they lead the nation in defensive three and outs with over six, and they also have eight non-offensive touchdowns. It's really impressive. He said he could tell that this defense was going to be something special during winter conditioning camp. He could see their work ethic, and he was able to be able to tell right then and there that they really take practice seriously. They may not have a turnover chain, but they do lead the nation in turnovers with 20 three they are second in the nation in turnovers with turning over the ball 23 times they talk about it every single game they celebrate whether they get it against the scout team or whether they get it against uh, the first team offense in practice or in a game they're always celebrating those turnovers so i got a question for you guys i was growing up as an athlete i was always told defense wins games but what do you think is more vital to success here is it offense or is it defense let me know in the comment section because this Aggies defense definitely gets overlooked with how high powered this offense is. Well, what do you think? I have to say, in, in, in this situation with this Utah State team, offense really matters in this one. When it's so high powered, it allows your defense to play even more aggressively and play looser. And with the amount of time that they take off the clock. I mean, your defense is pretty fresh if you know your <laughs> offense is going out scoring on almost every drive. So I would say offense leads to the defense. So with that last San Jose State touchdown, they have a new school record for points in a season with 458. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Three games left, too, by the way, Art. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Jordan Love, plenty of time up the right sideline, looking for Jalen Green. There was a little tuck right up by his shoulder pad, but no call. Yeah, right at the last second, that little, that little jab, and that was uh, Green on the coverage. Get it right here, a little tug, a little tug. But ref didn't think it was enough. Second and 10, Love gets it out quickly. 
It's Aaron Vaughns and Vaughns. Ball comes out, but San Jose State unable to recover it in time. Ziegler got his hands on the football, and he's coming out of the game here on third down. Yeah, well, it's hard to get subs in with how fast Utah State plays. I'm amazed they got Ziegler out. Love the throw, and that is caught. Taylor Compton, enough for a Utah State first down. And look at how fast they get on the ball. Yeah, I mean, it's not a lot of time, and these guys are set and ready to go. Love the throw. That is a tough throw. Looking for Compton again. They're saying it's a catch. 11 yards on the play. And just a great play fake. When, you're, when your offense is running well, those play fakes carry out. It made San Jose State stop their feet for a second. And Compton with a great haul. Love feeling a bit of pressure, gets rid of it. That's almost picked off by Monroe. Monroe almost got it with just his left hand. And Monroe read that the entire time. You run the play fake. Jordan Love rolls out a little bit to the left, looking for the seam route with Vaughn's, but Monroe does not move off of the hashes. Love with all kinds of time. Now he'll find Raymond. And Raymond forced out of bounds at the 17. Another first down. Bobby Brown, the second, forced him out of bounds. Tremendous job by that offensive line, giving Jordan Love all kinds of time. Thicklin on Roberts. It has been a good matchup. And they were so quick on the ball, it forced San Jose State to use a timeout on the defensive side of the ball in the first quarter. That is, and th that's just the pace. I mean, if you've been watching this, you see it goes fast. As soon as that ball's lined up, it is time to get going. And, and look at Ficklin, Roberts doing a great job. He disengages a little bit late, but Raymond coming over with that, that late crossing route. But let's, let's, let's watch the most important thing. Raymond steps out of bounds, but look at the offensive line. That is a trot that to get to the line. So if I'm an offensive line, I'm hoping that it's not huge explosive plays <laughs> over 25 yards because then you don't now do I'm getting into yeah. my 40 sprint time <laughs> yeah. again. But this offensive line gets on the ball immediately. They're lined up. They communicate. Quinn passes all the calls along the line, and they're ready to go as soon as the referee backs off. It's bright, gets a nice block from Vaughns to keep the play alive in terms of what would have been a negative play into a positive play. So give little Aaron Vaughns some credit there. They list him at 5'7", 185, and I think that's generous. That's generous. Yeah. Was he, I think he was wearing cleats when he did that height. <laughs> Second down, it's Love, and then he just kind of tried to pitch it forward. It seemed like a risky decision. But no harm, no foul. That, that was a chest pass. <laughs> that wasn't even a pitch. It looked two-handed. Yeah. Let's look at the replay one more time. He's like, should I out. run this? Ugh. Yeah, that, that's a pitch for the three-pointer. Bright on the screen pass. Has blockers. Maybe didn't have as much patience there. Could have helped him, I think, to wait just a hair. But it's bring up fourth and short. And Dominic Eberle, one of the best kickers in America, will trot out. Was a finalist for the Lou Groza Award last year. Certainly be a strong candidate again this year. The junior from Germany. 15 of 19 on the season. This would be a 26-yard attempt. In America, he's fourth in points. And he connects on that one. So Everly, his 16th made field goal of the season. And Utah State, for the first time today, leads... 
and it's 10 to 7. I thought I would have said that about 20 minutes ago. I, I know, I know. We, we, we actually had them leading at kickoff <laughs> yes. for the start of this contest. So it's it's been a switch. But Utah State, it, it's funny. When you look at this team, and you see right there Dominic Everly third in, uh, in Utah State books right now, and I think he has a very good shot at least getting to second easily before the end of this season. But this Utah State team, San Jose State's figured out a way to kind of slow them a little bit, which has kept them in these contests. The only problem is they have to get their offense more involved, and they got to get first downs. You can't leave that defense on the field running at that pace for too much longer, especially in this first half. What a spectacular shot. We love our crew, and this is one of the reasons why they give you that incredible look at this magnificent stadium maverick stadium the, the redo has made this one of my favorite places to come to in the mountain west and no chance at a return there so we'll get another look at the san jose state offense an offense so far in the game has minus six yards again we end up gushing about the offense for utah state but we could <laughs> if we were fair spend as much time on their defense yeah we we could easily because this defense does a great job and testament to the first two drives negative on on the offensive production side. And there's still 524 to go in the first. We're still quarter. in the first quarter here. <laughs> Nevins really did good work there to pick up two yards. He was met by Chase uh, Christian. Christiansen. There you there go. There we go. Man. I got it. Yeah. It's confusing. You want to say Christiansen, but it's Christiansen. You see Gage Ferguson, one of the great leaders of this team, back in that safety position, another senior who was honored before the game. Love to throw, and that is caught. That is a beautiful job by Justin Holmes. Nine yards on the play. And just finding a nice little soft spot in between two defenders in the zone. Josh Love does a good job waiting for it and then just teardropping it over the side. So great job, and we have our first first down for San Jose State. And now they have positive yards on the day. A lot of movement, but it's a simple handoff to Nevins. He's fortunate to hold on to the football brought down at the 41 by Gage Ferguson. So I want to pose a thought to you. You can tell me I'm a fool, or you can tell me I'm a genius. How come teams don't use the entire play clock when they're on offense against Utah State? They ran that play with 14 on the play clock. I don't know. It's a mystery to me. You're absolutely right. I would take as much time as possible, but if they're trying to go for flow and for rhythm, that's the only time you don't use all the clock. So here we are now. They're going to hike it over 14 again on the clock. And Love able to complete it. He had terrific protection that time from the offensive line as Trey Walker makes the catch. And it's another Spartan first down. And the protection was on point. Let's look at this offensive line. Even with the blitz, look how they just compressed everything in the middle and just kind of walled up. And I mean, Love had a chance. He was looking off to the left, came back to the right, and then waited on the right to throw to the perfect spot to his receiver and another first down for San Jose State. Packer in it running back. He'll take the toss. And Rockmore, along with some help from David Woodward, able to bring down Packer after a gain of a couple. But I like the fact that San Jose State's committed to the run. They're not just abandoning it because their numbers aren't that great. They're really trying to do a concerted effort to get out on the edges, whether it's jet sweeps, wide toss cracks, and wide zone plays. They're trying to make an effort to run away from the teeth of this defense to keep the momentum going. Love the throw. Nevins the catch, and Christiansen forces him out of bounds and brings up a third more manageable situation. I'm very impressed with the Spartan offense, what they're doing on this series. Yeah, they've, they've gotten comfortable. The first two drives didn't look as clean, but now on this drive, they are really mixing it up between the run and the pass and finding different receivers out there to move the ball down the field. Third down. Haven't talked much about Josh Oliver yet. 
looking in his direction, it's almost picked off. Gage Ferguson was thinking like I was. He's yeah, like, you know, exactly. They haven't really gone to Oliver much yet. I want to, I want to defend him. Yeah, is he in the ear? Because you had Josh Oliver split out to the bottom of the screen to the left, and then you had Billy Humphreys, the backup tight end, as the other split out on the right side. So they had two tight ends playing the slot position on that third down play. Jordan Nathan waits inside his own 10 and a fair catch at the seven. So what is the absolute rule on that with the fair catch inside the 10? I thought you'd never do a fair catch inside the 10. Well, in that situation, you know they're, they're plus 50. So for them, I think, and if you're Utah State, if it's inside the five. Then you let it go. You kind of set your feet at seven. Okay. And then if it gets behind you, then you kind of let it go. And you also think about where the defenders are as they're coming right. down. Because you don't want them pinning you on the one. Right. You just never know what the bounce is going to be. It's just impossible to predict. Yeah, it is. All right, so long field to go now for Jordan Love and the Aggies offense. Coming off back-to-back -back games, they scored 28 points in the first quarter. This is Aaron Bonds, and they like to use him on these end arounds, but fly sweeps, and that time, San Jose State was not fooled. And Hadari Darden there at 41 was there to make the play. Yeah, the hesitation by Vaughn. Too many stutter steps. You, once you're going that far horizontal, you've got to get north and south. You get one stutter maybe, and then you got to stick your foot in the ground and go north. Injured player down on the field. 42 for San Jose State. Let's find out who that is here. Steven Houston. Oh, no, yep. that's the offensive guy. Oh, it's uh, Junior Fajoko. Oh, yeah, Fajoko, who's a big part of this defense yep. because he plays the outside linebacker position, but he also can play defensive end depending on if they go into a four-down scheme or not. So a very valuable backup swing uh, outside defender. Well, hopefully he's going to be okay. Well, there's said, a, job a really, off. really important part of this defense. And just through that, as you mentioned, just a freshman, you're getting a lot of reps, becoming a bigger and bigger part of this Spartan defense. Yeah, most of the times when you're losing on the scoreboard, you wouldn't think that you've won the first quarter, but at this point, it feels like San Jose State has won the first quarter. Yes, it's like judging a boxing round. <laughs> Thompson, and again, the Spartan defense showing up, making plays. Aguayo able to get up there, 31. And just a great job of the San Jose State defensive line, you know, between Roberts, Hall, and Bridges, doing a really good job of really constricting and not allowing the uh, defenders to get to the second le or the offensive line to get to the second level. They're really absorbing those double team blocks and keeping guys engaged that makes it very tough for a running back to get to the second level when the linebackers can run free third and 13 from his own end zone love it's trouble jalen green with the catch well short of the first down and it's going to force utah state to punt and quinn ficklin on, yeah, you don't leave a defensive lineman with a running back. So Ficklin kind of takes the initial push. They're sliding to the left, but Roberts just presses that gap, gets the running back, and that's already a tough task when you got a big guy who has a head of steam running at you. So very lucky to get that ball off. Taylor Hintz, remember, muffed his first chance, and it ended up turning into six points for the Spartans. But here, a strong punt and a fair catch by Trell all the way back at his own 41-yard line. Solid 45-yard punt, no return. So Josh Love in the San Jose State offense has excellent field position. They only trail by three. That was a good job. The San Jose State defense has done a great job of really getting this offensive line and making a new line of scrimmage against them. The defensive line for San Jose State has pushed them back more often than not. And outside of giving up the big play, and that one drive, they've done really well to hold Utah State at bay. Play action. 
going down the field. And that is caught. Trey Walker, outstanding grab in this Spartan offense. It's surprising some people here in the opening court. It is. The offensive line does a great job. Look at the chop block off the edge by the running back. And what a haul in by Trey Walker. Falling down and big gain. And now you see for the first time San Jose State pressuring that red zone. Tyler Nevins in on a short gain, and that will be the end of the first quarter. But San Jose State surprising. Tight football contest so far. All right, it's time for us to get involved. Let's go to Danny. Take it away, Danny. We're through one quarter. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to all the people that are watching on, on Facebook and posted to Instagram. Take a look at some of these photos. We've got Mark Market Professor watching the Aggies in Georgia. Nini 65, they're driving back from St. George watching the game. Very cool. Hi, guys. Papa, he posted Grandma teaching the young ones about Aggie love, starting them young here. Guys, I love it. I have my phone with me right here checking those posts, so make sure you continue to post using the hashtag SJSU versus USU. Let me know where you're watching this game from. Now, guys, here's a segment I want to involve everybody, our viewers, Ari Max. This is thumbs up or thumbs down. The Mountain West Conference Thank you. record for total points in a season is 608. It was done by another Utah team in BYU back in 2001. Coming into this game, Utah State just needs 158 points to take over that top spot. Thumbs up or thumbs down, will they do it? All right, Max, let's go to you first. This, this is a tough one. I've seen the first quarter, but normally I would have said if you count them going to the championship game and the bowl game, I think, yes, they yeah. have a shot at uh, at going up. But seeing the San Jose State team showing a blueprint, I think it's going to be tough. I'm thumbs down as well, because keep this in mind at home. The final two regular season games for Utah State are at Colorado State, which has had a down year, so they might score 50 plus. But then they're at Boise State. I, I just don't think they're going to get enough points in that game. So it's And if they don't beat Boise State, they're not going to play in the Mountain West Championship game in all likelihood. So then it's really a thumbs down. But if everything goes their way and they include the bowl game, they've got a chance to do it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. But they have to get this job done today. Today, that's right. All right, Danny, what else do you have for us? Well, I just wanted to say that I'm thumbs up on this one. I think they've got enough games to go here. And I, you guys have witnessed this offense in the past. 19 scoring drives in less than a minute, second in the nation. These guys can score fast. Maybe we haven't seen it yet this game. There's a lot of game left to be played. And I have seen this Utah State offense and how good they are. I believe that they can get that top spot. Guys, let me know in the comments if you're watching on Facebook. Let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Will Utah State take over that top spot in the Mountain West in scoring? And I could easily flip on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if it's, uh, you know, 35 to 7 at the half, I'm, I may change my mind. Spartans continue their good looking drive. Another first down. It's going to set up first and goal. Trey Hartley, the catch. Great pocket set up there for San Jose State. Can I say uh, deuce trays on that one? Because Trey yeah. made the Trey other. Walker. Yeah, Trey, Trey Walker. Hartley. And then we went to Trey, Trey Hartley. Squared. Yes. Yeah, Trey Squared. There we go. Yeah, Utah State's defense, you see the. The bottom third there, they don't allow much. Timeout, gonna, gonna think about it a little bit more. <laughs> so they're down to just one timeout, still have almost an entire quarter of football. We have. So San Jose State, the reason they're in the game is because of plays like these that they've made early in the game. Watch this, Love sets it out there. And Trey Walker just goes and gets it. Outstanding grab. Great grab indeed. And if you want to upset a team like Utah State in their own home stadium, you've got to have more explosive plays, big plays down the field like this one. And it's something that San Jose State ha is starting to get better with. They're starting to catch some traction, but they haven't seen that many. That's been the difference uh, with their record this season. These guys are starting to develop a little bit late in the season, so it makes them tough. First and goal. Nevins, no place to go. 
David Woodward up there from his inside linebacker position, number three in the Mountain West in tackles. And coaches praise him at his consistent high level of play. Yeah, this guy, Coach, Coach was very adamant about saying, hey, listen, this guy comes in, he plays at the same level in practice, in games, and that's what makes him so good, and that's why you see he's top five. Second and goal. Love the throw, and that is knocked down Lockmore. What a play. He's so versatile defensively for Utah State. He can do so many things. He can, and Rockmore is playing in a position where he's that kind of, in the 3-4, he's that nickel linebacker type. So he plays on the edge, and he's just so rangy. You look at him getting the extension there. He's engaged with a blocker, but still jumps and bats the ball down. Very athletic move and a very good player on this defense. Love looking, going to the corner of the end zone. There were four guys in coverage there around Josh Oliver. Utah State has clearly said he's not going to beat us today. Yeah, there, when you're talking about, you know, usually when you say spy, you're assuming the quarterback. Yep. No, the spy is Josh Oliver. So a good looking drive. Now Bryce Crawford will come on for the field goal attempt. As Josh Love was locked in there, no chance for Oliver. Twenty-eight yard attempt from Crawford has the distance and it is good. Game tied at ten. Yes, in the second quarter. <laughs> wow. Let's go downstairs to Danny. We are so glad that you are watching this game on Facebook. In fact, San Jose State is just 25 miles yeah, away really from Facebook headquarters. And the team took a visit to Facebook. It's a part of their Beyond Football program. Tobra Blaine, excuse me, she leads this program. She was with, uh, she went to Oregon State. Coach Brennan appointed her at Oregon State. He had that program beyond, pro beyond football. They brought it to San Jose State. This is the first year they've done it. It's to prepare athletes for life after football. Now they focus on three different pillars in this. First, they want to expose the athletes, the football players specifically, to the Bay Area in the Silicon Valley. There's 250,000 San Jose State alumni in that Bay Area. Secondly, they focus on community service outreach. Lastly, they focus on career development and they take tours much like the Facebook one. They've been to Google as well in order to get these guys thinking about life after football. In fact, senior wide receiver Justin Holmes took advantage of this program. He's been practicing writing his resumes. He's gone on interviews and these tours. And guys, he graduates in December, and get this, he has already accepted his very first job with one of those companies that he toured with through this Beyond Football program. So very, very cool. Thank you, Danny. All right, Max, I feel like we're both in a state of shock right now. That's how surprised we are that this game is tied at 10 early in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, coming in, watching the film, and seeing the highlights that is Utah State, this is very interesting and intriguing. Now, I'm not complaining because you always love to see a tight football For game sure. and a good football game, but at the same time, I'm a little concerned Utah State has to get into a rhythm offensively. We haven't seen that high tank, high octane offense that we're accustomed to with them. Okay, and yeah. they control their own destiny, so they need to make sure that they are keeping pace because Boise State went out and did their job against Fresno State, so yeah. they're right behind them, so they can't afford a loss, especially one at home. If Fresno State losing really sets it up for Utah State. If they win out, they host the Mountain West Championship game. Yes, very important, and this is a great home advantage, uh, especially when you're talking about December 1st. <laughs> right, so if it's Fresno State coming here instead of vice versa, that really tilts it in favor of the Aggies. Yeah, it, it does indeed. So... There's yeah. still plenty of football left to be played. I don't want to write off Colorado State. And, and look, Utah State still has to win at Boise. Yeah. It's not an easy <laughs> thing to do. Scarver, no chance at a return. So let's see how Utah State reacts because this is one of the things that I talked about months ago that if you play in a lot of games that aren't close, then you don't have a chance to play in close games. And yes. therefore, late in the year when games become critical, you haven't played four quarters. You don't know what it's like. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how they react to everything that they've seen thus far.
Scarver the catch, nifty move. And Scarver forced out of bounds at the 42 yard line. <laughs> Great job, Scarver just runs a quick stop route right for the defender, just sits down in, in the zone. And a great catch, great move to get the first down. Love gets it to the outside to Jordan Nathan, and Nathan is put down hard after just a few yards on the game. Jesse Asuna with the tackle. And the one thing that I'm actually intrigued by is the fact that these guys are getting out here at the linebacker position on sp in space. Nice carry from Gerald Bright. That'll move the sticks, 14-yard carry. Again, it's Bright, and he'll be tackled by Darden. So when I was talking about not being in close games, they were in a one-score game, first game of the season at Michigan State. The only other game that was a one-score game was at Wyoming on October 20th. The other games, they blown people out by double digits. Bright, that's a real good tackle there in open space by Asuna. Oh, check that, that was Darden. Yeah, and this team, I tell you what, this defense for San Jose State's been playing well. Yeah, they gave up two plays to get the first down, but this defense is very active and they've been very fast to the football. Utah State is two for five on third down so far. Thompson in the game at running back. He's just to the left of Jordan Love. Jordan Love's numbers are still great, though. 12 for 16, 147 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. And that pass is behind the intended target and almost picked off. So what do you do here? This is sort of in between territory. Do you go for it here on fourth down? Yeah, I'd say go for it. You're in no man's land. And... Well, now they're trying to get the crowd engaged a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. they'll go for it on fourth down, or at least set up as though they're going to go for it. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure if they have a pooch in their in their uh, repertoire. We, I could be wrong. I mean, Jordan Love's shown the ability to do almost everything. Wouldn't shock me if he could just yeah. throw one down, a little dart at the five. But they're going to go for it. Love quickly gets it out to Tarver. First down and more for Tarver, and then all kinds of flags because. They were getting each other's face masks. And they I don't still know who are. Went first. <laughs> They're still there. You know, Tarver had the first twist of the face mask, but uh, <laughs> you wonder if there wasn't a little bit extra by John Toussaint. Curious how they make this call because I think it was after the play, which would give them still the first down. But it, if they call it on Tarver, which he really did have hands to the face. Well, and Toussaint did on that replay. Yeah. They both had each other's face masks. So it'll be interesting if they're offsetting or if one gets called or not. Both had a fistful of metal going into the sidelines. They got almost the whole crew in on this conversation. <laughs> yes. What did you see? What did you see? Tarver's a first initiate, but Tucson's right there with him, and they hold it all the way to the sidelines. That is, yeah, up. Oh, and the cheerleader, oh, goodness. And the cheerleader got involved. That's that's never good. That's never good. I and hope she's can't okay. they just watch comfortably, not have to be concerned for their safety? <laughs> it's on the play. During the play, personal foul, face mask, number two, defense. That penalty's half the distance of the goal, automatic first down. After the play, personal foul, face mask, number one, offense. That'd be 15 yards from the end of the penalty. It set up first and 10, Utah State. First and 10 right where the ball is right now. <laughs> After all that. That's a long explanation for that. And yeah, yeah, they're both. That's, yeah, they're both engaged and they're both inbound still, so. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, receivers coach Bo Knight was in there trying to talk Tarver down because, yeah. He's a senior, he's a leader, and emotion does get there, but keep it together. Thompson. Toussaint forces him out of bounds, but a late flag comes in at the 28-yard line. Carson Terrell, the backup tight end, might have been involved here. 
holding number 88 offense. 10 yard penalties for the previous spot. We play first down. And yeah, first Terrell coming across in motion. You see him leading in front of Thompson, but yep, there it is. You and can't he didn't have need the to jersey. Do it. Didn't no. Need it. no, did not need that. Thompson has plenty enough speed that he could have outran him. First and 20. Caught, Tarver, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, gets most of that lost yardage on the last play back and right on the ball. Tarver is such a great target. He really knows how to play with his body position to get the ball. Jordan Nathan to catch, not much doing there. A few yards, brings up third down. Yeah, very tough to run those type of swing type screens. Out to the sides when the, when the corners are playing and press coverage, you usually want to throw that when they're off in zone, about a six to seven yard cushion off the receiver, so you have that space. Whenever a grandma chimes in, I got to go to it. So Diana Downward says, Go Spartans, my grandson, Kyle Harmon, number 45. So if grandma's watching, she's getting on the show. Yes, 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 grandma. Glad that Diane's with us here. They set up the screen, nicely designed. It's Gerald Bright. Inside the 10 and reaches it out. Does he get the score? No, they're going to say out of bounds at the two. 22 yard gain. A little short. Oh, -ho, change everything. Oh, oh, oh. Touchdown, Aggies. Wow. They talk it over. The goal line reaches around the world, remember? And he reached it out before he went out of bounds. They give him the score. So, Gerald Wright, if it stands, will be his second receiving touchdown of the season. So called a 24 yard receiving touchdown. Now they're gonna take a look at it. Yeah, I'd love to see the replay just to see because it was very close. It was on the far sideline of our booth. But just a great job of Bright. And then look at Castaneda, the right guard out there with the lead block. And then and then Bright, just the extra effort. I don't know if the right foot. I can't foot. tell from that angle. All right, the right foot is out, and he hasn't reached it out. I think they bring it back to the yeah, line. Yeah, I think they bring it back out. But it's such a tough thing because you look at the line judge running down the sideline. You have Tarver, you have a defender. You have to kind of read through to see if he's in bounds or not. The initial right there, and that's the foot we don't really see, that right foot, whether he's fully extended or out of bounds first. Yeah, I'm not sure there's enough there to overturn it, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's anything conclusive. We'll wait and see. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. When they say stands, it means they, there was nothing there that they could change it. Yeah. It, Confirmed, it, then you know that he's like he was in. He saw enough. And even watching on the big screen here, they're showing the replay. You still can't really tell from that angle. Nope. Because you don't know if the ball's fully extended or not just from the true angle of it. We had a pylon cam like the NFL. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, that would have been cool. Dominic Eberle on for the PAT. The kick is up and it is good. He remains perfect on the season on extra points. 57 for 57. Josh Love, he'll take those numbers. 7 to 13, 65 yards. Their lone touchdown for the Spartans came on special teams. It's the offense still looking for their first touchdown. Play action. Love on target, and it's Trey Walker. And we have a flag down in the backfield. But tremendous catch by Trey Walker. And Josh foul. Love staying in the, to the pocket. Place, number 79, offense. Oh, they're going to get backed up here. Troy Kowalski, 79. He's been a warrior for him. He's one of their leaders. He started every game. He had hands to the face. And look at this. You, you have seven-man pro, max pro in. And 
I didn't really see the hands to the face. It was one of those quick jabs, but I trust the referee to make that call. But Kowalski's been solid for them. Junior out of Glendale High School, out of my neck of the woods. Um, has a tough task in front of him with his Utah State defense. And no place to go there for Nevins. I thought it was pretty clear. Look at oh, there we go. There, there we go. go. Yeah, that that was. I'm not. Gonna, you know what? I didn't want to see that as an offensive lineman. <laughs> I was in denial. But seeing that big white glove in the face and having that dark helmet go backwards, kind of kind of was a statement shot there. Thank you to our producer for finding that still shot. <laughs> Love going deep down the field and coming back for the football and can't make the catch is Trey Hartley. He knew it was short and he tried <laughs> to come back and get it. And you know, Cameron you Haney in coverage there. And it's, it's tough because I mean, what play do you have in your playbook that's second and 20? You know, so you have you tried the run, tried to do a draw, get some yards back, you didn't. So you got to take that shot downfield, but now your third and 20, you just want to kind of get some yardage back just so you have a little bit better punch. So you can hopefully punt Utah, keep pin Utah State a little bit deeper for the next drive. Set up the screen and nobody is buying that. Utah State gets up there and quickly makes the play. To my Vena. Number 42 there to make the play senior from Kirkland, Washington. Yeah, playing at that one of those middle linebacker positions. This is a 3-4 defense, so three down linemen, four linebackers, and Tomavena playing right there on the inside. A great read. Jordan Nathan. And he's tried to start going the other direction. Basically just ran about six yards backwards. I'm sure if he had that to do over again, he'd have caught it and just stepped right out of bounds. Or just let it go. <laughs> it was it was going that way. You have to assume it would have would have sailed out of bounds, but Nathan makes a great catch on the sideline. The only problem is he had to go backwards to catch his momentum. And Monroe, the outstanding corner there doing terrific work on special teams. So this is when you gotta wonder if the Aggies really start rolling. They've got the lead, decent field position. Great momentum from offense and defense. On the ground, it's Darwin Thompson. Makes a couple guys miss. And that looked like a horse collar attempt. And he's finally gonna be stopped at the San Jose 48 yard line. See, I point out the great blocking on the edge there. Da uh, Raymond on the edge with the first block on the inside slot, and then number 12, I think it was number 12 for them, uh, on the edge for Utah State. Again, it's Thompson. He picks up four yards on first down. Here go back. DJ Nelson was the other blocker on that previous play. Jonathan Leonard Jr. up there to make the play. From his safety position for the Spartans. And Jordan Love completes it. DJ Nelson breaking tackles, cuts it back. Is he in? No. About a half a foot away, 42 yards on the play for DJ Nelson. And he's a crowd favorite. He's from right here in Logan. Yeah, he is. And the back judge wanted to call the touchdown. He thought about it. He was like, no, it was a little bit of a slide, so he, he hesitated with his hands. First and goal. And Jordan Love keeps it, gets the touchdown. Six rushing touchdowns on the season. And just like that, it's 23-10. And a dynamic fashion, as always, with this Utah State offense. Comes up with a big play, an explosive play by DJ Nelson. You think he's down. He wiggles his way out and gets down to the one and caps off the touchdown. Well, that drive by their standards, right about on pace. Four plays, 66 yards, a minute and four seconds. 
Burley's extra point is good. It's another look on this big play. Great blocking on the outside. And, you know, Jalen Green, the transfer from USC, holding up, and DJ Nelson kind of fitting inside. And DJ Nelson just kept his feet going. Look at this one missed tackle, two missed tackle. You think he's going down? No. Get to the sideline, sprint. And then business decision. And then you have the actual scoring play on the next one. Play fake to Thompson. Jordan Love reads it. Defensive end collapses. Just sneaks in right behind. Nothing big. Another score for Jordan Love. All right, how about these numbers for Jordan Love? In the air, 17 for 22, 237 yards, two touchdowns. And now he also has a rushing touchdown. And we have seven and a half minutes left in this quarter <laughs> before we get to the half. Everly kicks it off. It's a real short kick, and it's mishandled. Michael Harris went back there to get the football. And tough sledding back there. It's going to be San Jose State football all the way back at their 10-yard line. Yeah, miscommunication about who was, who was going to get it. Maybe one guy called it. And then Harris call, you know, stops for a second, hesitates. I think they didn't anticipate the wind knocking the ball down that much. It just seemed like they, they just misread how deep the kick was going to be. Yeah, this, this is one of the tough things. When you're at, we're at this elevation, and the wind plays a big role when that ball when, when that ball hangs in the air like that. It can get knocked down or it can get pushed far. Tyler Nevins in at running back, first and ten. We got a flag before the play. Delay a game coming off a dead ball situation. I didn't see that much. Main first down. When you're that far backed up, that kind of mistake will make a coach maybe think about retirement. <laughs> you can't have that. <laughs> that that that's a that's a tough one. We'll just look at the amount of flags that have been in this so far in this first half of this football game. We've had a lot of penalties and a lot of calls early. Nevins, a few yards. And a great job by Josh Oliver really sealing the edge. Nevins goes right up into the line to suck up those linebackers, and then he just slides out to the right behind Oliver's pin block, and a solid game for them. So it kind of negates that loss of the delay of game. Was a heat-seeking missile on this play. Look at the top of your screen. He just goes in between the guard and the tackle and delivers a vicious blow, jarring the ball loose from Love. And what a tremendous play there. We're going to have a booth review, but that looked pretty good, pretty solid from what we saw. All of a sudden, things seem a lot more like we expected them to be. <laughs> yes, especially if this is upheld. Um, I have very little doubt that they would score from this, this distance out. But we talked about how good this team is. It's not how good the offense is, but it's how good this team plays. Because defense, this is the norm for them. The ruling is an incomplete pass. Oh. Third down on the five yard line. Coming forward. Okay, arm was coming forward. But still, what a tremendous play coming in off the edge by Rockmore. Great blitz timing by him coming from that kind of outside backer, nickel uh, backer position. And yeah, that. that Josh loves feeling that. That rib protector didn't help that much on that blow. Let's take another look at it. 
from this angle. The re reason why it looks like an incompletion. See Rockmore coming from the left side of your screen, unabated. Third down. Catch is made. Josh Oliver. First time he's been able to make a big play for the San Jose State offense today. And Fort Berry in coverage. And a big one indeed. They're coming with the blitz pressure. It's third and long. And Oliver, you see why he's the number one tight in the country. Back shoulder adjustment to the play, giving them a big first down. 24 yards on that play. And not much there on the first down run because the, really the heart and soul and teeth of this defense is right there between the front three and those middle backers. That inside five are just so tough to run on on the inside. And it looks like we have a guy down for San Jose State appears to be the center. Yeah, uh, Kyle Hoppy. Hoppy. Yeah, Kyle Hoppy. And with a lot of the influx of this offensive line for San Jose State throughout the season, trying to find the right five-man combination, the one thing that has been consistent has been Kyle Hoppy in the middle. So you hope he's okay taking a knee. They're talking to him. They're working looks to be that left arm area, shoulder area. Ari has a sh has a shoulder sling. Let's see in the middle of the pile up. Yeah, yeah, he's right there. You see his back to us, 56, and and he just bends down and grabs that shoulder towards the end of it. He's already got the yeah, compression sleeve on that left shoulder. Trevor Robbins is in the game. You always got to wonder that first center quarterback exchange after a change in personnel. Pretty good snap. And before the play, they got a full start. Yeah, that line shift right at the last second before the snap could have made somebody hesitate or flinch uh, before the ball got snapped. Prior to the snap, false start, number 10, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, this is a big change in the sense it felt like it was about to be 31 to 10. Instead, San Jose State's gotten a few first downs. So the call to turn it into an incomplete pass turning out to be very significant. Yeah, it, it, it was. It could have been a big momentum changer. And Trey Walker, the receiver, jumped off sides. They want to set up that middle screen. Ball's up. Able to come up with the interception. Let's take Leilua, a look I think, gets the pressure here, 44. He does. He does. And just a great job. And if you're Josh Love, you just wish you wouldn't have thrown that ball at all. And then Tipa Alai. They were trying to set up the middle it. screen to Billy Humphreys. They to were, the tight end. And Tipa tipped it in the air and then came back and came down with it. Big play for this Utah State defense. Second interception of the season. Vaughn's check that it's Gerald Bright. And he'll get there. Touchdown Aggies. A 29 yard scamper. One play, Gerald Bright reverses field. He's going left and then changes course. And look at Jordan Love. The quarterback's out there like, listen, if anything needs to be picked up, I'm going out there. That, that's just a great selfless attitude about this team. Nobody's worried about it. They're just trying to get their team in the end zone and get some points on the board. It was kind of creepy. I said, wow, it was almost 31-10, but then they changed the call. Next play, interception, play after that touchdown, it's 31-10. <laughs> Look at that number, 33 rushing touchdowns on the season. 
uh, an improvement of 11 so far and second in FBS. That's 20 scoring drives under a minute, second best in the nation. All right, we previewed this. We said we were coming with the Ask the Announcer segment. And so it's now time to put Max Starks in the hot seat. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Here we are. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. First question is from Dustin Lewis. Why is Utah State ranked in both polls but not in the college football playoff? Great question, Dustin. And the reason why, and Ari and I actually were talking about this before the game, they haven't had that signature win. Now, had they have beaten Michigan State in week one, right. the then number 11 team in the country, I think you'd have that signature win. I think they would be in the college football playoff rankings. But because they haven't had that game, and I think they're waiting for that Fresno State or Boise State, depending on where they rank after this victory right. this weekend, I think that's when you see it. Um, but, yeah, they haven't had the signature victory. Okay. All right, this is from Mackenzie Allen. How does Utah State avoid letdowns against, let's say, a team like San Jose State or even next week against Colorado State? I, I think the biggest thing, and we talked to Matt Wells about this because that was one of our concerns coming into this game. They said they understand how important yep. it is. These guys are more mature. You know, you think of most of the guys on this team, they're, they're, they're married. They have yeah. kids. They have families. So they understand the importance of all these opportunities. And because they've been together for so long, they had, they're working on their second year, 18 of 22 returning starters. You know, you have that kind of importance, and they know what it means. So you saw a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning of this game, but you see what happens. They lock in, and they get loaded, and they start playing for each other, and they're very unselfish. And that's why you see the kind of results. Okay, so if Utah State wins out, Taylor Emerson wants to know if they're 12 and one, do they go to the New Year's Six bowl game? You know, I, I think they have. I think they have a shot. I think it, the last team, whoever that is, that's kind of in that mix for picking. I think they can make an outside shot because you look at the season. Only one loss on the year, and they will have won their conference championship. So coming in a group of five. I think they have the strongest. It's them and UCF, I think, are the two that aren't power five teams that kind of make it in there if they went out. All right, we're talking about the fast scoring drives, and there it is. They are number two in America, scoring drives under 60 seconds with 20. want to thank everyone for submitting your questions. There were way more questions than we could get to, but keep them coming, and depending on how the game goes, we'll try to get some more of your Ask the Announcer questions. And the genius of Max Starks. <laughs> and I appreciate those questions. Very good questions yep. by our audience. Thank you for submitting those. And San Jose State's going to get some really good field position to start out. Ball goes out of bounds before it goes into the end zone. So ball starts out at the 35-yard line uh, for San Jose State. And they need to answer offensively if they want to keep pace in this football game. Or at least just don't give him the ball back in less than a minute and a half. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and absolutely no place to go there. Ayers, number four, the freshman, brought down by Rockamore. Yeah, that, that's not helping their cause, though, Ari, uh, plays like that. This team has done a great job. San Jose State came in with a game plan, it looks like, to really pressure the edges of this defense. And Utah State seems to have known that. And they've done a great job on the edges. Outside of a couple of plays, they've done a really good job of not allowing San Jose State to get on their outside edges and run with their perimeter game. Get the ball out to Ayers. And Ayers out of bounds at the 40. Christiansen there to make the play defensively. Josh, roll, Josh Love doing a great job with a little half roll out to the right. Cornerbacks bail, and he's able to get the ball out to Ayers. Third manageable. We don't say this too often for uh, San Jose State, but a very manageable third down situation for them. They're one for six on third downs today. Blitz is coming. Love holds it, and it's incomplete. Trey Hartley, the intended target. That play really didn't stand a chance. Once he pump faked, that pressure was on top of him. It was, and you have a blitz coming from the left side from that nickel position, kind of like the one that Rockmore delivered the blow right. on the incompletion that had to be reviewed. So Utah State dialing up the blitz on these third downs and really making it tough for San Jose State. Once again, they're punting again. And it's, they're still 4-12 on the clock. I mean, you're just giving Utah State too much time. 
Real nice job by Crawford, 46 yard punt, no return. But this is, I mean, they don't need four minutes and five seconds to go the length of the field. No, they don't. No, they don't. It, and it's always one explosive play here or there. You think about already, I think there's been five explosive plays by Utah State, and they've been significant. And that's why you see this team is the team that they are when we talk about scoring 50 points on average on the season. They, they, they've been they've been magnificent. Yeah, you see those last three drives. They've been rock solid. It's Thompson and Thompson hit pretty hard, but still manages to fall forward across the 19 yard line. And a great job. Just a little halfback draw to the right. Thompson just kind of reads his way and picks up seven. I mean, he's fourth in America in yards per carry at seven and a half yards per carry. Nice throw and catch there. Now, that's where you see the arm strength of Jordan Love. He makes that throw look easy. And it comes out quick. He made a quick decision, got it out to Green. Green, of course, the graduate transfer from USC. They've been thrilled with his work ethic, how he's earned the respect of his teammates. And Love this time goes to Tarver. And Tarver makes the catch at the 40. Jakari Monroe in coverage. Fake to Thompson, give it to Bonds. Bonds tried to make a guy miss and does so. Bonds stays on his feet, out of bounds at the San Jose State 37 yard line. Trey Webb, the last guy standing, able to make the tackle after 23 yards on the play. And just a nice bubble screen here to the left. Once again, the wide receivers blocking downfield. What a great job by them. Up, oh, and we have a player down on the field for San Jose State down towards the near sideline of us. Can't get a clear visual of who it is. Can't see it yet. Oh, it's 31. Okay. Ethan Aguayo. Uh, Ethan Aguayo down, checking lower leg injury. He's in the area of the field near where there was a lot of blocking and congestion before Bonds broke free. Good news, he's up. I mean, he's up, he's walking on power. That, that's always a good sign. Yeah, Guayo, very popular name as of late with, uh, with some players going into the NFL from college. First and 10 for the Aggies. Vaughn's in motion, they fake it to him. Love the throw and it's off the hands. Darwin Thompson was downfield, unable to make the catch. Uh, he was right in position. That yeah. was a great throw. Just kind of lost a little bit. It looked like he lost sight of it at the last second when he was trying to haul the pass in. A great throw by Love. I mean, running backs don't usually get a throw with a ball on a line quite like that. No. I think he might have just misjudged the speed at which that ball was traveling. <laughs> that was a lot of pace. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, they're used to getting a screen pass where yeah. the ball is just kind of floating over little, to you. Yeah, a little dump. <laughs> it's Thompson. Patience pays off as Thompson gets another Utah State first down. Leonard with the tackle after 13 yards on the play. It makes up for that missed catch, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still gonna give us the first down. Another big hole for Thompson. And it's gonna be first and goal at the seven. Again, it's Leonard with the tackle. And they are just running right at the San Jose State team. Taking advantage of, looks like guys are a little tired. Timeout. Timeout, San Jose, San Jose State. State. So they're out of timeouts. And yeah, I, I, I wish I had more timeouts. I'd call more than that because these guys <laughs> run at a very fast pace. Right. Be like yeah. whenever you walk, you'd be like, I just get an extra 30 seconds right now. Can yeah. I get an extra 90 seconds? Listen, somebody just don't, you know, don't even, don't even get injured. Just fake an injury so I can get a break. So we don't have to burn these timeouts, but. This is, and this is the way that Utah State creeps up on you, is their pace is so fast. You can't 
s switch guys out, and especially among the defensive line. Defensive linemen are usually used to switching out. So you have your first and second down kind of run-stopping defensive linemen, and then you bring in a third down package, which is usually a little bit undersized guys. You move your defensive ends inside, bring out linebacker types mm -hmm. on the edges, but they can't switch these guys out. So whoever comes out to start of this drive usually yeah. is yeah. in there unless there is a break in action like a timeout or some, or they're on their near sard line. But for the most part, yeah, you're playing with the same crew, so they're getting tired. I do want you to remember that the first lead was only 10 to seven as we look at the point differential. All right, at home, they've scored 295 points. That's best in America. Point differential, second best in America. Touchdown, second best in America. After today, they may be first in America. Throw to the back of the end zone to Raymond. He can't get it. Back there in the back of Bryson Bridges, uh, putting the hand in the face, like putting the hand in the face of a three-point shooter, uh, and Love is just a little bit off throwing to Raymond. So I was getting to before our guys put up that outstanding graphic is Thompson's going to be stopped at about the three-and-a-half-yard line. Th this offense already has over 410 yards of offense in this half, and it feels like it hasn't really been the best Utah State offense at home we've seen. They've and just been pretty good. They've just been pretty good. That's they, they created a human. ridiculous standard. They've looked human. Yeah. That, that, that's a sad thing to say when they put up 400 yards. Love the throw, and Tarver, there was contact, and there's the flag. There are flags on both sides of the field, at the top of your screen and the bottom of your screen. Yeah, Dakari Monroe was on Ronkavi and Tarver on that one, which is pretty visible. But, yeah, I didn't even see to the right. Oh, so we're yeah. thinking it may have been offsides, which so it was a free play. But I think there was pass interference. They should put this ball halfway to the goal line. There are two fouls on the play, both on defense. Defense offside. That penalty is declined. Pass interference number 19 in the end zone. That penalty is accepted. Ball placed on the two-yard line. First down. Well, there's the offsides. But and here's the Bryson interference. Yeah, and Great yeah. job from our crew getting you both penalties. And here we go. First and goal from the two. It's Thompson, and he will not score on this play. Great defense up front. And that's really the strength of the defense. Keep in mind, Utah State will get the football to start the third quarter. Yeah, so they're not worried about having to put a score on. No, but I mean, you're thinking it could be 45-10 if you're San Jose State before you get the ball again. That depends how much clock they want to use here. They are using a little clock, which they normally don't, too. Love the throw, looking for Jalen Green, and Green can't get to it. Pretty good job in coverage there by Toussaint. All you want to do is kind of hold the player up just a little bit. Yeah, and especially when you think about a back shoulder throw like Jordan Love was going to him. If you can get him looking, quote unquote, to the left, when he has to take a back shoulder to the right, and the hand play that went yep. on, that makes it tougher for the receiver to locate the football. Before third and goal, we've got a flag. Utah State backing up. I guess it's a false start, maybe. Ball start, number 51 offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Right, this sounds crazy, but with this team, it may give them a little more room to work with and spread the field a little bit. It does. And it's not often that the center gets a false start. Let's point that out. That was the center, Quinn Ficklin, flagged with the false start. So usually it's because maybe they hitch a little bit with their hand or they flinch before they snap the football. But very rare indeed for an offensive lineman at the center position to get those flags, but it does happen. Third and goal from the seven. Love all kinds of time. Dumps it off to Thompson. Needs a block. Makes a man miss. Gets the touchdown. Darwin Thompson. He makes it look so easy. 
and commonplace. Throw it. First of all, you have all the motion flowing to the right. Even your backside ISO receiver on the left-hand side running uh, an over route to the right, and you shift Thompson over to the right. He's running a swing underneath the three wide receivers, tailor-made for this team. And Darwin Thompson makes a guy miss and just squirts into the end zone. Let's look at another shot from the end zone position. And he's underneath. Linebacker, miss, corner, miss, hop in the end zone. That's his, that's his MO. And like you said, this could very realistically be 45-10. Well, I, here's where, here's where I'm, I'm actually changing it. I, it could be 52-10 after the OB drive in the third quarter because Utah State has all three timeouts. If San Jose State doesn't move the ball, they're going to get it back. And I promise you, Matt Wells will say, we're scoring right now. That, they just have a different mentality. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. their mentality. They don't. They don't let up. No. Until the second half, fourth quarter, when they pull yeah. their starting quarterback. Yeah. But yeah, this team. If you're is San Jose State aggressive. and you come out here and you try to score and you have a couple incomplete passes, I promise you, Utah State will have a chance to score before the end of the half. <laughs> and I like that mentality. I have to be honest. Yeah. I like that mentality. You have to keep the gas on, and it's still the first half. Pretty good return by Ziegler out to the 23. All right, so there's a minute and 10 seconds. If you're San Jose State, you better force them to use all three timeouts before you give them the ball back. Exactly. I mean, I'm thinking you need to run it. <laughs> but if you if you think you're going to score, you could open up the chance for them to score. I'm just saying if you just hand it off three times, you're pretty sure that you're not going to get scored on again. But if you get aggressive, at your own risk. Yeah, yeah which... There's a possibility. You got, you got four wides out there. And Love wants to throw it, and he's going to get hit. Ball's up in the air, almost picked off, and the clock stops with 104 to go in the half. Without, without anything, and Josh Love is down. Yeah. That was a big hit. He was, he was trying to open up. Let's watch the replay here. Love's trying to identify his guy, and he's trying to get that arm cleared, but man. I mean, that's insane. You think about how fast a day away was on top of the quarterback. I mean, usually a guy from the middle of the formation doesn't get through that quick. No, he doesn't. He just took an angle, took a rip move to the inside, and Love was hit fully exposed, uh, full extension on that, on that potential pass. Okay, now the one piece of small good news, if, if Love is banged up for any stretch. Montella Aaron, their backup, has 10 career starts under his belt. Okay. So they do have some experience at quarterback. But we'll see if he's just out for a play. Yeah. You know, the question was posed is, is this a penalty in the NFL? Uh, uh, by, absolutely. This ab year, that's a penalty. Yeah, this year, You yeah. can't get your body weight on top of the quarterback. No, you can't land with your full weight. Okay, in fact, they're going to the guy who's, I, I've listed as third string, Michael Carrillo, fifth-year senior. He's only attempted seven passes this year. And they're going to have him throw it right away, and it's caught. And I guarantee Utah State gets a timeout right here. And they do. So 58 seconds to go, and they still have two timeouts. Timeout, Utah State. They're first of the half. 30 I've seconds in length. three games. I've gotten I'm used to say, this mentality. I, I, I'm, I'm taking your lead <laughs> because this is only my third Mountain West game this season, and I've been waiting to call this Utah yeah. State team since about week four, and this is just impressive. And, you know, you think about this team being 14. Okay, yeah, we're playing a 1-8 team. Came out a little bit sluggish. Yep. But I've now seen what it is that's the machine that is Utah State. And the aggression level, uh, I, I'm excited about it because this is what you want to see in college football. Don't let up at any point. I don't care how big the lead is. Keep our starters in. Let's keep pressuring them. And then, okay, after the third quarter, let, let's peel off a little bit when we've secured a victory for the most part. But no let ups going into halftime, especially when you have such a dynamic offense who can score at will. Well, it was interesting before the game, I was talking with the outstanding SID for Utah State, Doug Hoffman, and, and Doug and I were talking about this offense, and he said the offense is like an avalanche. Like, yes. There's just no place to hide. There's no place to go. It happens so fast. 
And here's a nice tackle by Woodward on third down. They get another timeout, 53 seconds to go, and they still have a timeout. Timeout, Utah State, their second and a half. 30-second timeout. Okay, Utah State is poised. They're, they're in perfect position. You took 17 seconds off the clock. And look at this. Woodward, big tackle. David Woodward, once again, heat-seeking missile. He was all over this play from the get-go. And yes, we're about to see this fifth gear that is Utah State kick into high gear once they get the ball back. And remember, they have 20 drives under a minute, so this isn't like a special occasion. No, this isn't too many offense. This is their normal offense. They came after the punt. They don't get it. A real good job on the punt, getting it away. And we'll just have to see where they mark it out of bounds. I always think this is virtually impossible to guess where it actually crossed. It is, especially with the height. But look at he's still running forward. So they're going to have the ball at their own 36-yard line with 46 seconds at a timeout. 32 yards on the punt. Let's see. DJ Nelson could do it. Uh, Ronkavian Tar <laughs> could do it. Jalen Green can do it. Yeah. And of course, we haven't even gotten to the backfield yet. <laughs> Thompson or Bright have both shown that explosion as well. So all these weapons on this turf for 46 seconds. Let's see what happens. Tarver the catch. Now this is going to take some time only because he doesn't get out of bounds and it's not a first down. I mean, for them, that's that play's taking too long. Yeah, that took that took four they seconds. They didn't too get long. enough out of that. Love in trouble gets rid of it, but it's incomplete. And there, the pass rush got to the quarterback, Jordan Nathan, the intended target. Man. Boogie Roberts in the backfield, pressure in the face from that nose tackle position. Once again, working up against Quinn Ficklin. Stout leader of that offensive line. Love the throw, and it's an up for first down, so the clock will stop. Dax Raymond the catch. There's a good safe pass. You got the first down. They're up on the ball. Right when they blow the whistle, they're they're playing. Love gets it to Tarver, and he gets it up for a first down, which will stop the clock with 12 seconds. This isn't turning out to be quite as easy as we thought. No, it was that initial holdup by Tarver on the first pass. Love to Tarver. You got to go down. You got to go down here, Tarver. He does. Final timeout with two seconds to go in the half. <laughs> Come on, the seniors got to know you got to go down there. Yeah, but he, he looked like he was trying, but they time were holding him up. State. Very we'll smart by San Jose State. That is funny when the guy's out. trying to go down and the other team's trying to lift trying him Trying to lift him up. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, essentially, you look at, they burned about seven seconds on that play, yep. which normally you don't. And he had the first down, so the clock would have stopped. Look, look, in real right, time, Tarver, right he should have just went down. He kind of, It looked like he kind of tripped at his feet. And then everybody's just holding him up. The defender on the backside has his hips, and he's like hiking him up. So he can't drop his hips to fall to the ground. Well, if Dominic Everly wants to win the Lou Groves Award, this would help his cause. 43-yard attempt. He's already made several field goals from 51. Distance won't be an issue here. Kicking against the wind. Has the distance. Hits the bar and no good. Hits the goal post. Hits the goal post as time expires. Pretty entertaining first half. Our score 38 to 10 Aggies. What are you going to take away from the opening half? Well, I'd say the first quarter looked really good yeah. for San Jose State. You know, holding a 10-10 tie on a team who doesn't allow touchdowns in the first quarter yep. normally 
and secondly, usually has routed guys by, you know, 28 points scored. So I would say San Jose State had a great job, but then Utah State woke up in the second in the second quarter and put on an onslaught on the San Jose State defense. They got tired. The offense had one decent drive that led to, you know, led to some decent field position, but for the most part, they have just been on top of them. So Utah State is as advertised as the number 14 team in the country. The first quarter was pretty interesting, and we were shocked. We couldn't believe it was such a close game, but they started rolling, and let's go downstairs to Danny. Coach, a little bit of a slow start for you guys. A myth pun, a couple false starts. What did you say to your team at that point in time to get them refocused? Uh, not, not much, because it was really just self-inflected, but 38 points, and they got 10, and we handed them seven on a gift wrap seven on a, on a punt. We're playing good. I mean, we're... Uh, I guess I need to apologize for 52 not being on the board. <laughs> I, I think you might need to apologize for that because, I mean, I was just going to ask you, you almost have 150 yards rushing, over 300 yards passing in the first half. What more can you ask for from this offense? Well, we, we need to come out the second half and establish it um, and try to score the right out of the gate, the two two possessions we got, and see if we can get some three and outs. Um, I think the you know the running game just it, it gets strung out, and we got to keep getting downhill on them. Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. All right, thanks to Danny. Bryce Crawford will kick things off. And he's not kicked this one very far. Real good return by Scarver. 24 yards on the return. And I got a feeling Utah State is going to be in fast mode as soon as they come out here. And you see the yards, 453 yards of total offense. And that's just a half. And this team's still not satisfied. You heard Matt Wells. He was not excited at all. And Jordan's numbers were outstanding. 25 of 34, 326, three touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. Yeah, and this is, this is old hat. This is his second game doing that. <laughs> Love dumps it off. It's Thompson. And Thompson did a real nice job there. To, def to keep Darden at arm's distance. Let's hear what uh, Coach Brennan told Danny when he came out of the locker room, Danny. Yeah, guys, I was talking to him about this pace that this offense moves at, and he first of all said that they just have to settle down a little bit, that they obviously have rushed this defense. Darwin Thompson, goodbye! Touchdown, Aggies! 59 yards! See, what Danny gave an example of what Coach was talking about. <laughs> yeah, right she there. did. <laughs> 31 seconds are off this clock. And Ari. it's 44 to 10. <laughs> yeah, shortly to be 45 with Dominic Everly. But that's how fast and dominant this offense is. We're doing a highlight, getting ready for the second half, and then they do something fantastic. Extra points good by Dominic Everly. 45-10. <laughs> 45 to 10, and this game was tied at 10 all 35 consecutive points. Uh, Danny, as we're watching the replay of Thompson, we kind of cut you off. What else did Coach Brennan have to say? Well, first of all, he talked exactly about that, that pace of that offense. He said that the defense are not turning to the sidelines, that they're missing a lot of calls. They aren't having their eyes to the sidelines to pick up what they want to do defensively. So he wanted that to change in the second half. Hopefully that one woke them up from the second half. And then he also said that uh, Hoppy and Love are both okay coming into the second half. I know that they were a bit banged up in that first half. Also, guys, just an observation when they were walking out of the locker room, this San Jose State was quiet. I don't know if it was focused or if they were already out of it, but I guess we'll see right here when they uh, take the field again. Well, the first 31 seconds may be, heck, this is just a hard place to win. And <laughs> we're kind of like, wow, this is, this is hard. This is what I expected the uh, first quarter to be like. My, my, my jaw dropped, not the first play of the second half. Ziegler from the six. And Ziegler, real nice return across the 35 up to the 37 yard line. Right, great return there. And, you know, when you look at just this Utah State team, it's just, it's so tough because you, 
you don't know what they're going to do from week to week. Is it going to be the run that's going to be emphasized? Is it going to be the pass? They do both of them so well and so balanced that it provides just a whole mixed bag of things to get ready for in a week and to come up here to Logan. Well, as Danny mentioned, good news. The last time we saw Josh Love, he had taken a big hit, and we weren't sure about his ability to come back and play the second half. But he's out there for the Spartans. He hands it off there to Nevins for a gain of three on first down. Christiansen up with the tackle. And Nevins kind of limping off to the sidelines. Hacker comes into the game to replace him. And Packer gets pushed back after a gain of two yards. Real good hit there. And yeah. Now, Lai came in from the side, and I think it was Woodward. Yeah, it was. Woodward it came was. in and hit him straight on. And Humphreys was on Woodward, by the way. He was engaged and still managed to make the tackle as well. Let's point that out. He had a man on him and still made the play. They're setting up the screen, and they get it. <laughs> the receiver almost ran in. Ayers almost ran into his lineman, or that could have been a huge play there, Max. I know Jake Coleman, the right guard, was working his level. Uh, screen was set up great. Oliver with the great stalk block and then just coming up, rolling underneath. But then you got two linemen in the middle. He's thinking he's got to worry about the blue jerseys, and he has to watch out for the white jerseys as well. But uh, first down nonetheless for San Jose State. Good play fake, Love. And that ball a little bit high. He was looking for Trey Hartley. And this is tough, you know, for this team. I mean, you think about San Jose State. You come out of the locker room, you have a game plan, you feel your adjustments. <laughs> and then on the second play, <laughs> you know, Thompson just breaks your heart yards. with a 59 yard scamper. And now you're like, okay, we still got to operate as normal. <laughs> but no rush by San Jose State. They don't feel this pressure. They're going out and they're just operating their offense at their own pace. Packer. Maybe a gain of a yard, bring up third and long. You know, the way they've been bringing the blitzes on third down, the, one that's, the screen game might be the play again. Yeah, I, I think that's their best shot is the aggression of this defense lends itself to those type of screens or something just over the top in the middle. They can get something quick with Oliver kind of running, you know, a drag or some type of delayed route across the middle might be your best two options on the third down. And the blitz is coming. Love gets it away, and that's got to be some kind of interference. Wow, no call. There was a lot of contact between 27 Fortenberry and the receiver. And protection looks solid here. Get a seven-man pro again. Oliver staying in on this last one to protect the edges. And then sending Packer off of the left side to cut the ends of the outside man rushing. So clean pocket for Love, but a little bit of contact between the receiver and defensive back that didn't allow that to translate into a first down. Jordan Nathan waiting back inside his own 10. And Nathan, oh, it hits, and like a perfect sand wedge, it spins. Now it's gonna be from where it was first touched, not where they downed it. Yeah. But that's what we were talking about, Ari. You put your heels yeah. at the seven. If it goes behind you, you just gotta let it go yeah. and hope it rolls into the end zone. All right, Danny has a special guest. I do. I have Utah State Athletic Director John Hartwell here with me. And we cannot sing this team's praises enough. Just absolutely phenomenal, especially offensively. And they're ranked 14th nationally, but maybe got a little snubbed there by the college football rankings. What do you think? Yeah, the first two CFP rankings out and, and us not mentioned in either one. You know, I haven't taken the Danny White approach early on uh, about it, but, you know, we, we feel like our – 
our body of work speaks for itself and, and continues to each week. Um, you know, so, so we feel really good about hopefully getting ranked this week in, in week three. A couple of teams, uh, you know, in the 20 to 25 range have already lost. But I, I will say, you know, we will continue, and, and Coach Wells and his staff have done a tremendous job because instead of looking down the road, he has had them focus week by week, staying focused on the opponent this week, all about San Jose State. Obviously, next week will be all about Colorado State. Believe me, these, these guys don't have to be told what's at stake here. And, and obviously, still in the mix in terms of the group of five member who would go to a New Year's Six Bowl. So the most important thing is, and they're doing a great job of this, control what we can control, win, go speak for ourselves on the field. And, and over the course of the next week or two, uh, we will be sending plenty of information to the CFP committee members. As you guys definitely should, and quickly, I know we talked about it right before on camera, but I want to give some love to this, love, actually pun intended, to this quarterback. Maybe could be in a Heisman conversation, maybe wouldn't win it because he's so young, but do you think he deserves to be in the conversation? Short, when you look at the numbers that Jordan Love has put up, not, not just statistically, but you look at what he's done from a passing standpoint, his efficiency, but even more so, when you look at our offense, and this offense takes a whole lot of poise to run. I mean, David Yost, our offensive coordinator, in constant motion with them, his presence and maturity goes way beyond being a sophomore, and he's done a tremendous job. You know, I think the accolades will come for Jordan, whether it's this year or uh, upcoming years. His future is tremendous. Absolutely. We're excited to see what else he can do here in this second half. Ari Max, back up to you guys. Thank you very much, and our appreciation to the athletic director for spending a few minutes with Danny. Second and nine. Jordan Love unable to complete it, looking for Aaron Bonds. So a rare third and long situation in the game so far. They're five for nine. I know you said Matt Wells expects better than 50% on third down. He'd really like this one backed up inside his own 10. Third and nine. Yeah, just to give them a little bit of breathing room if they do have to punt on fourth down. They can't convert. You don't want your punter punting out of the back of his end zone, especially when he has a fumble punt already or fumbled snap already at one punt in this game. Tarver makes the catch, but he had to come back so far to make the catch. It took his momentum the other direction. Only a gain of four on the play, and they'll have to punt. And one of the rare things, getting a three and out on this Utah State offense does not happen that often, so kudos to San Jose State uh, getting off the field quickly, and it looks like they'll have decent field position to start their next drive. Not a very good punt that time. It looked like it was partially tipped on. Oh, okay. Coming from the right side. Um, couldn't get a great view at it. San Jose State, they keep coming up. They're going to have it at their own 35 yard line. Join us for some college hoops on November 19th, the seventh rank. Nevada Wolfpack host Cal Baptist. You can catch that game exclusively on Facebook Stadium. Welcome to the game. And I'm excited to be there for that one up in Reno see a team that some people think has a chance to make the final four yeah i mean you know and that's one thing i really wish you know when it comes to those rankings you know the teams wait a couple games and then give us those rankings but i think nevada is one of those teams that's well deserving of their of their number josh love has a man there and he's got a touchdown spartans 35 yards to trey walker so you can say love to Walker, to Trey. <laughs> a Trey for six? No? No? Doesn't yeah, work? Okay. I okay. mean, I'll take it. Okay. I mean, look, it's 45 to 16. We, we, Do whatever I, you want. Yeah, exactly. Exactly at this point. You're here to entertain at this point. Yes. Your football analysis is yes. moot at this point. That's right. We we are we are in the <laughs> arena. We are the gladiators right now for <laughs> this contest. 
Extra point is up and it is good. 45-17 our score. Time out on the field. And what, what a great sequence. Think about this sequence for San Jose State. You get a three and out, a bad punt, great field position, and you capitalize off of that. And you pulled a Utah State-esque move by scoring quickly. Yeah. So great but the job. bad news for them is that you give the ball back to Utah State in a hurry. At Utah State University's Smash Lab, students apply mathematics, physics, and material science to protect us during earthquakes. Testing the ultra-high performance concrete used in construction throughout the world, these students figure out what keeps buildings up and bridges standing. I'm an Aggie. I make the world earthquake resistant. As a former student athlete myself, I know how much is on your plate, you know, being a student academically and then dealing with practices and things like that. But what is so fascinating to me is when I come to Utah and find out how many players are married on this team. Twelve players, in fact, are married on this Utah State team. It's a very, very normal thing for Utah-based teams to have married players. But I am curious to know, and Ari and Max, I want to get you in on this conversation as well. Do you think there is a huge difference between a 20-year-old offensive lineman who's maybe still trying to figure out what career path he wants to do in comparison to lining up against a 20-year-old defensive lineman that's married, has his own home, and, and is there a maturity level? Is there any advantages as a player? I mean, there's three sophomores that are married on this Utah State team. <laughs> in my mind, I mean, I think when you look at stability, uh, focus, and importance, I, th I think it does play an advantage if you are a guy who has his family started priorities, you're not less likely to go out and do any type of risky behavior because you got to go home. Well, this is my 10th year covering this conference. And when I first got into this conference, Utah and BYU are a part of the conference. And what I learned, Danny, was is seeing a 24-year-old right tackle who's married with two kids, has his life so structured and in order, it's different than the 19-year-old defensive end who's rushing the passer at him. So I think there's actually a huge advantage, especially in certain positions. If you're an older, mature guy who's served his mission, I think the advantage goes to the offensive lineman who's got the maturity and the family. Man, I totally agree. Just because offensive lineman by nature, we're already a very structured, right. very, very kind of focused individual. But then you put a family aspect on it, it makes it that much more important. And you have a couple more years uh, where your body has developed. Scarver. But it didn't look like there was anything there, and he still got it to the 25. I know. Well done. <laughs> it is. It, it, it's amazing to see. And Scarver's one of those guys. He's so explosive. He only needs a little bit of space, and he maximizes his ability. You look at this start, and you're starting to the right. Like, no, there's too many yellow jerseys. There's a thin room to the left, and then he just sticks the foot and goes north and gets an additional nine yards and puts him in great starting field position. First and 10 from the 25. I wasn't sure we'd still be seeing Jordan Love at this point in the game, but with them trimming it to a 31 point game, I think that they were like, it's time to. Yeah, got to keep it going. Yeah. We need we need 35 plus cushions, uh, preferably in the 40 range, I'm sure. If uh, they check my Wells map, by the way, it's a 28 point game. Oh, 28. There you go. Yes. Adjustment, Thompson moving over to the right side. Get out to Thompson, you got one block, got a second block, and gets a Utah State first down. But that play didn't look like there was much there, and they turned it into a big play. Dax Raymond, a key block as they pick up 14 yards. Yeah, key block, block on the perimeter, cutting down the defender, and opening up that sideline for Thompson. Well, this time they don't get the blocks and no chance for DJ Nelson. And I found that most of the success they've had is that is that bubble screen coming back to the inside. This one was to the outside. Tarver running an inside route up the field to kind of take the safety out, but 
Not a lot of room. Thompson shows good patience, but doesn't come up with all that much. We'll call it a gain of four. It's going to bring up third and eight. And Utah State just still on the ball immediately. I'm surprised they've slowed the pace down. I, I, I am as well. But getting themselves adjusted and they switched up, you know, completely their formation. Bringing two guys over to the right. Blitz is coming. Should have something, and it's Raymond. First down, Aggies. How about that throw from Jordan Love? And Jesse Asuna was literally pasted to Raymond as he was running that kind of deep post route, and still, Dax Raymond comes up with the, the catch. 20 yards on the play. Thompson breaking tackles. Oh, finally gets <laughs> tripped up, or he'd still be running. That was a heck of a play there by Ziegler to make that tackle because nobody one. else could bring him down. And that was an open field tackle too. So for a defensive back making an open field tackle, kudos to him in limiting that damage. Right now in it running back. You know, I'm very into the whole how many countries are watching. I like that Stephanie is watching from Toronto, Canada. You got to make sure the Canadians are watching. Yes, got to make sure brothers and sisters from the north are there. Count it for. Jalen Green comes back to get it. One man to beat. Touchdown, Aggies. A 37-yard strike. Love to Green for the, for the touchdown for seven. So now they're they're over their points per game. They are. <laughs> yes. they, they've now hit their average, <laughs> yes. so they're good. Haven't fallen below. Well, they've been averaging 50.1. Now they're 51. So yeah, you can breathe easy. You don't want to. Yeah. You're number two in American points. You won't fall. The, the record's still in sight. <laughs> Let's just take another look at this, and what a great job. Play action fake to Bryant, um, to Bright, and then Jalen Green just coming back underneath and makes one guy miss. Great block, looked like Raymond downfield, and then Green a little, little hop, skipping a jump into the end zone. What a nice addition Jalen Green has been. Yes, the graduate has. transfer from USC. All right, I just want to give Jordan Love some more love. He's out 31 of 41 for 403 yards, four touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. Not shabby in two and a half quarters worth of work. <laughs> and Devin Tompkins on the block, not Dax Raymond. I apologize. Devin okay. Tompkins. Because you got to point out when receivers do a good job yep. of blocking downfield, it's very important. Most touchdowns in a season, well, they're just going to keep adding to that record. Exactly. And as you see, I mean, blew past the 2011 numbers. And we still have more football left in the now season. Now, remember the question about whether they would get over BYU for the most points in the season? We both went thumbs down. Yeah. I don't know. Asterisk. <laughs> yeah, because this game still, I mean, if Jordan Love's still in this contest, I do not put it out of the realm of possibility of it being 70-plus again, which would be the second time in the season. Interesting. They go with the pooch kick here and a fair catch at the 27. Max, take me through that decision. I mean, I know they're kicking into the wind, but. Yeah, I think it's because of the wind, and they had that first kick of the second half. Remember, that got kicked, got knocked out of bounds right about the three-yard line. Yeah. So I think they said the wind is a factor, so might as well just pooch it off and away. And, you know, it's still in decent field position, a little bit better than the touchback, but why fight the, why fight the wind when you don't have to? And this team put so much emphasis on special teams. Now, they lost their special teams coordinator back in February. And at that time, Matt Wells was already really engaged with special teams, decided to get even more engaged. And they have so many starters play on special teams, and they are truly special in that aspect of the game. Brett Foley, his first catch of the game, a reserve tight end, was wide open, 23 yards on the play. Yeah, and a good job there of misdirection. You have the fake jet sweep, fake underneath uh, dive play, and then tight end just kind of leaks out to the right. Great job at 
you know, big first down play for uh, San Jose State. And no place to go. David Woodward right up in there to make the tackle on Packer. And, you know, great job. Woodward just kind of pokes his way in. Let's look here. The tight end has a decision to make. Do I block the inside guy or do I go to my end man of line responsibilities? And, of course, he picked the outside guy, and Woodward was right there to meet the running back before he even got to the hole. There was no hole to be gotten. Second and 11. Love to throw. Receiver's got a step, can't get to the football, got his hands on it, but couldn't reel it in. Aaron and Wade in coverage there. And what a great job of Joshua to stand in there and deliver that pressure coming from his right. And the ball was there, just ah, inches away from being able to haul that ball in. That would have been a big play for San Jose State. I've been impressed by the way Josh Love has thrown the deep ball. Yeah, he's, he's had a nice touch on it. Yeah, he's had some nice touch. It hasn't, you haven't seen really anything overthrown or severely underthrown. He's been right in the wheelhouse, but these defenders have been right pasted to the receivers, making it very tough. Well, the offensive lineman moved here. And they're going to say it's offsides that Nalei forced him to move. Yeah, I would say so. On the and not being biased as an offensive lineman, but just a pure broadcast analyst perspective, <laughs> that the guy encroached him. He forced him to move. He didn't want to move. Jamie Navarro there, playing right tackle. Yeah, true freshman, uh, out of Temecula, California, Great Oaks High School. Normal starter there is Dino Motes. Defense offsides, number ten, causing a reaction with offense. Five yard penalty. Still remains third down. They got it right, and Max can breathe the sigh of relief. Yes, it's not against the offensive line. We've seen enough of those in this contest. We don't need any more. Fair. Nobody wants to see that. Again, when we first saw today's referee, I thought I said on the air, I hope we see very little of him. <laughs> <laughs> that has not gone well for us since no, it that. Hasn't. <laughs> Penalties a plenty. Again, great touch on the throw. I mean, he catches it maybe. He can't put it in a better spot. No, that was the best possible. Yeah, Trey Hartley was the intended target. Man, that ball was dropped right in there. Yeah, and his left hand was kind of held up with the defender. But, uh, yeah, great touch by Love. Look at it on and the look replay. where this ball is. I mean, that's yeah. if he had brought his, I mean, the defender did a good job of hand fighting. Yeah. Because without that left hand, he couldn't bring it in. Yeah, and let's point out, great job by Deontay Fortenberry yep. for defending that <laughs> and forcing that. Let this one go, and it's going to go into the end zone. That, that ball got yeah. up on Hartley Time real quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was no shot. He was like, oh, and we got to bounce inside the two, and then it just skied up in the air and into the end zone. Yeah, that was actually Trey Walker, not Trey Hartley. Let's go to Danny. Well, I just wanted to, I want to take a check in here with Instagram. We're seeing a lot of dogs here. Bentley Boxer, Mix Arabia we've got also. And we've got Baxter showing up and showing out. And then Devin, he posted three dogs. That's coming up here in a second, all in Utah State Jersey. So cool. Keep posting those photos using the hashtag SJSU versus USU. And we'll feature them right here on the broadcast. Thanks so much for posting those photos. You guys, I want to talk about running back Darwin Thompson because he was named Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week this week for the first time in his career. So far today, 15 carries, 140 yards, and a touchdown. Just absolutely impressive. And, you know, he may not have gotten conference recognition before, but he has gotten national recognition before. NFL.com rated him as the 17th most freakish athlete in, the, in college football. And that was before he even played a down at Utah State. He's five foot eight, 190 pounds, but what he can do in the weight room is unbelievable. Check out some of this weight room footage that we have from him. He's got a squat max of 560 pounds. He's been seen on social media squatting seven reps at 515 pounds. Just unbelievable. Remember, five foot eight, 190 pounds himself. 
He also logged a vertical jump of 40 inches. That's a benchmark signifying elite explosiveness at the NFL Combine. To put that vertical into perspective, Saquon Barkley, you heard of him? Well, the Giants' first round draft pick jumped 41 in his vertical at the NFL Combine, just one inch higher than Darwin Thompson. This guy is a complete freakish athlete, you guys. Just so impressive. Guys, what are you thinking about this running back so far today? I think he's outstanding. He's a heck of a talent, but I do want to give Credit where credit is due. Max Starks told us last night at dinner he could squat 595 three times. Yeah, that was at my max. Yes. But also, I was also a foot and <laughs> I was literally you twice the size his size. Yes. And yeah, that that's just so impressive um, to see what he could do. And I mean, when you look at him, he has the versatility yep. of like a Darren Sproles. He has that smaller, lower center of gravity, but very explosive nonetheless. Here's the reverse, and Vaughn's is look like he was in trouble. And instead turns it into like a one, two yard game. <laughs> and that's just what's amazing about this Utah State team. Jordan Love is out there blocking for him on the reverse. This was supposed to be a seven yard loss. True. And you got a one yard game. That's an eight yard differential from where it should have been to where it ended up. Gerald Bright and a flag is down. It's usually in the area of offensive holding. Yeah, uh, out there on the outside. We yeah. talked about the great job the receivers have done today, blocking on the edges for their teammates, and that time got caught, hands probably out of position. Holy number 11 offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. They got Aaron Bonds. Correction, number 88. I thought okay. it was. I thought Bonds yeah. was out of the game. And yeah. It is Carson Terrible. I was like, I <laughs> think that, Bonds was on the sideline. He's like, like, come on, guys. He looks pretty big to be <laughs> <laughs> a wide receiver. <laughs> Second and 19. And this is one offense that actually has plays for this. Yeah, in their they, playbook. They, they do. It, it's called their entire playbook. <laughs> because every play can hit home. Blitz is coming. They got to get rid of it. They do. Thompson with blockers in front. Watch out. Thompson in the clear. Can anybody catch him? Monroe's tracking him. The 10, the 5, touchdown Aggies. goodness and just watch the replay it's just pure foot speed we just talked about the man squat and bench and then his acceleration his explosiveness on a screenplay I mean that's like running a hundred yard dash right there yes exactly <laughs> he ran a hundred yards yeah. considering where he started yeah. in the backfield but the fact that you're at third 19 when you throw a screen at that, you're like, we're trying to get some of our yardage yeah. back. Potentially might get close to a first down where we can go for it on fourth. No, it hits home. And that's, that's what we said. Any play in their playbook can hit home at any time. You saw a simple screen out to the right turn into another touchdown score for this Utah State Aggie offense. But it brings me to one of the other questions that we received. This is from Ginger Quinn. She said, hey, Ari, you better change your mind with Utah State beating BYU with most points. And I gotta say, <laughs> Ginger, you might be right. I it's agree. It's 59 agree. to 17 and a fair catch at the 24-yard line. So, Ginger, no taken. I'm shifting my position. Here's a question for you that I think you may like. Lanny Langston asks, is Utah State the best non-Power 5 team in America? 
I, I mean, I have to, I have to give credence to UCF and what they're right. doing because they're on a 22-game win streak. Yeah, hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue that, but I'd say number two, strong favorite, it has to be Utah State. Fresno State was in there until their loss last night, but definitely solidly number two, Utah State. Josh Love, plenty of time, and he completes it to the outside. Good throw and catch there, Trey Hartley the catch. Well, I've got a few more questions to come back okay. to. Our outstanding Facebook producer, Brian, was sending me the questions, keeping me ready to go in case we had a little low in the action. Yeah. Now, let's point out this. We talked about Josh Oliver in the open. We haven't seen much Josh Oliver. One or two catches in this yep. contest, but Trey Hartley and Trey Walker have been doing a great job on the outsides at the receiver position of moving this offense. Oliver, one catch, 24 yards. Blitz is coming. They pick it up. Love has time, and it got up on Hartley, and he just couldn't get his hands right in time to make the catch. Yeah, thrown behind a little bit, and Hartley did his best job to try and adjust back to the ball, but just moving too fast uh, to move it. And just look at another great job. Look at the pocket and late, late hit after the ball was released, but a solid job. And, Kyle Hoppy doing the best, injured earlier, coming back in this contest and really fighting through. This is the third straight game for Utah State with over 600 yards of offense. They had 700 some yards a couple weeks ago, then over 600 last week. And right now they're at 686 and we still got a little less than four minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah, this is not. So unusual. the school record of 704 is in real danger. It's in huge danger yeah. and I'm thinking about, remember Texas Tech and Oklahoma a couple years back, Mahomes versus Mayfield? Yep. And all the, it was like a thousand yards of offense. Imagine if one team added the majority of that for a similar performance. Um, yeah, well, this, this has been impressive. San Jose State's got 200 yards of offense, so we're still, I mean, we're almost at 900 yards of offense. Yeah. That ball gets batted around. Fortenberry picks it off. Utah State football. The avalanche continues. It does. And it comes from all sides. You don't really it's, it's snow blindness almost at this moment at this moment because you think, okay, we have to worry about this offense doing something tremendous. And then the defense has been playing exceptional. Look at that. Pop Fortnite pops the ball out, tips it a second time, catches it on the third uh, bounce, and Utah State is back on the field and they have great field position only 49 yards this time what a tremendous play by Deontay Fortenberry new quarterback in the game Henry Columbi we've seen him in similar role this year mop it up and Justin Hervey I believe was the ball carrier there So I guess we're closing the book on Jordan Love. 32 of 42, 491 yards, five touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. Just couldn't get him the 500 passing today. <laughs> what a tremendous job. And this Utah State Aggie team is just an absolute monster to deal with. And uh, we got a correction anybody. to make here, Max. It's actually Andrew Peasley in the game, a freshman quarterback. It's not okay. Columbia, who, by the way, is also a freshman, but... It's Peasley and Justin Hervey, ball carrier there. It'll bring up, call it third and five. Aguayo, another tackle. I mean, couldn't they have let Jordan Love get to 500? That's what I was thinking. And then you look also, the starting offensive lines out of this football game. Just wanted to point that out as well. Uh, Dimitri Alafua. And at center, Quinn Ficklin's day's done. Wyatt Bowles over at right guard. Tarver seems done. I think a bunch of the senior starters are out of there. Well, let me ask you this. Would you want to keep playing if it was you? And it was senior day, your last game at home? I, I would kind of want to. But if I know that I left the field and my team had almost 700 yards of offense when I left, I think I left it in good okay. hands. Okay. I left it in good hands. So they don't get over 700 just yet. 
They, yeah, they still have a full quarter and a little bit of time left. So assuming that Jordan Love doesn't come back, okay, so they this is their 10th game. He has only played in four fourth quarters this year. That's, that's, that's astounding. But you look at what he does within the three quarters that he's on the field. He has almost a game and a half worth of production for most quarterbacks at other schools uh, in that same time frame. So talk about the efficiency and just the explosiveness of this offense. I mean, think about it. he has 491 yards. 88 yards came on one screen on yeah. third and 19. So he has a great supporting cast, and he does a great job of managing this offense. And boy. I don't know if Alabama would even want to see a team like this right now. I mean, they I don't they, think they Alabama's do scared of anybody. I They're think not anybody scared else, of anybody. Clemson might be like, yeah, I don't know. But Alabama's like, come on. Yeah, Alabama will want to <laughs> test their wills. I mean, right. because there's nobody in the SEC that's going to test right. them. But it's still one of those things where it's like, okay, wait a second. Yeah. It's a little tough to defend. And let me qualify that remark. If the game was here, I'm not sure Alabama wants to come here. No. I think the no. coach might want to, but I'm not sure everybody on the team, it's not that easy to get here. Even if you charter here, it's, it's far away from Alabama. It's a very long And the flight. later in the year it gets, the worse the weather could be. I mean, if it was up to Utah State, they'd probably like to kick off at like 7 p.m. Yeah. local time on a Saturday, get it nice and chilly. Yeah, exactly. And then it's 9 o'clock, you know, 8, eight, eight, eight 9 o'clock yep. kick for them. So Alabama's going to be thrown off. But if they had to go down to Tuscaloosa, yeah, that's what yes. Alabama wants. Yeah. They want that southeast. Go play in start. that heat. Yes. And, and there it is. That just backs up what we just talked about. <laughs> He's not playing the fourth quarter of six ten. of their games. And I wonder, when Jordan Love leaves, this is one thing I didn't know, does the offensive line leave with him? <laughs> So does the back and forth get the same type of protection? <laughs> Probably not. Probably, Probably not. not all five starters, I wouldn't think, would stay out there. You just wholesale switch of the crew. Speaking of wholesale switches, we've now got the backup defense <laughs> for Utah State as well. So when the offense does well, defense benefits as well. Keep it on the ground. And look at this. Nevins. Big run. It's inside the 40-yard line of Utah State. The yards just keep piling up in this game. 33 yards on the carry for Tyler Nevins. Well, when you got the starting offense for one team and the backup defense for another, you're going to see some big plays. But what a great job of just blocking and the vision that Nevins has. That play started in the middle. He bounced it at the second level out to the left for a big gain. And... San Jose State, this is what you want to see, especially if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm the head coach for San Jose State. I need to put this on tape. I need to see us do some good things so we can build off of this for the next week and going into next season. See what these guys do in competition, in game-like scenarios. Roberson makes the catch, the running back, Malik Roberson, senior from Harbor City, California. Three quarters complete at Maverick Stadium in Logan, Utah. It's all Aggies 59-17. And let's go check in with Danny. Well, guys, it was just too much of a coincidence to have two quarterbacks with the same last name in this game. So we decided to come up with a little bit of a game here. And we're going to call this the love test. So cue the game show music. Oh, we might not have any. <laughs> so we've got Josh Love and Jordan Love. Here's what we're going to do. We've got Lydia here, and we've got Darcy here, a freshman, a graduate student. So you're going to work together here and try and get which love we're talking about here. We asked them some questions, okay? Here we go. First one. Which love said the hardest thing he's ever done is pass an anatomy test? Josh Love. Josh Love. Nope. In fact, it's your quarterback, Jordan Love. Yep. Okay, which Love's favorite movie is Black Panther and wishes he could own his own Black Panther? Jordan Love? I don't know. Jordan was correct. I'm going to give you good job. You think it's Jordan? It sounds like Jordan. It's Jordan. Which Love said that he would trade places with LeBron James for a day if he could switch lives with someone? Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Why do you guys say that so, so quickly? Because, you know, LeBron. We love him, and we love our quarterback. And he's, you know, dominating much like LeBron would. You are correct. It is Jordan. Which love says that if he uh, 
says that he's asked all the time if he's related to Mike Love from the Beach Boys. Joshua Love. Why'd you say that? I don't think there's anyone in the Beach Boys that looks like Jordan Love. <laughs> Probably. That's a fair statement there. Yeah, you are correct. That is Josh Love. Which Love would you say uh, would like, which Love said that he wants the opportunity to max out his credit card at Nike? Jordan Love. You are correct. Absolutely. Uh, which Love has a phobia of spiders? Josh. Jordan. Oh. Which Love was high school teammates with Juju Smith-Schuster of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Joshua Love? Joshua Love. <laughs> exactly, it was Josh. Wow. Which Love said that he could not live, out, live without his phone? Jordan, Jordan Love. Ding, ding, ding. You guys must see him around campus. All right, guys, you guys did a really good job. That's it for our very first Love Test. I appreciate both of you guys. That was kind of fun, right? Back up to you guys. That was fun, and that they seemed good. to know their quarterback pretty well. That's good. Outside of the first one, they, they got in a roll after that. And I mean, Jordan Love wants wants a Black Panther. I, I have my T'Challa Lego guy up in here if he if he wants him, but because he, he definitely has played his behind off today, it's been a great great sign watching him. Love the throw and quarterback a little bit too much on the throw. Looking for Josh Oliver who again still only has one catch. There is a flag down at the 38 yard line. Thank you. And as we're downfield, number 89 offense, receiver was covered up and went downfield for a pass. Five yard penalty, we play the down. Love with all day and a wide open receiver. And there it is, Josh Oliver, the first big play of the game for him. Sets up first and goal. Two big catches now for Oliver. The first one was a 24 yard gain. This one here, a 38 yard gain. And we talked about him being quiet, but he has over 50 yards receiving on two, on two, uh, two receptions. So you see the explosiveness and the playmaking ability of Josh Oliver and why he's one of the leading tight ends in the country. Lots of movement up front. Packer will be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. They were looking for Packer. And he's banged up. Grayson in coverage did a nice job here to dislodge the ball. And that was face mask to face mask. Yeah. And that's Logan Lee. Yeah, that was two. Those would have been two NFL penalties against uh, Utah State. Taking another look at it. Oh, yeah. I it, mean, he might get kicked land. out of the game in the yeah, NFL. Uh, that. Th that head, the head snap into the turf. Yeah, it's not a good sign. And this is it's artificial turf, so it's a little bit harder than than the uh, natural stuff. But then again, it is pretty chilly here, so that crowd might have been hard if it was natural. But um, yeah, team still looking at him. You hope he'll be okay. But yeah, very tough, tough hit. And not illegal in the college game. That was a legal hit. Uh, you know, I know I talk about the NFL aspect of it, but this is college, and that is a legal hit. It was nothing dirty done by the Utah State defender. Michael Carrillo 
He came in briefly at the end of the second quarter when Love took a big hit. And this is a good sign. You're sitting up on his own power. And, you know, there was a question posed about, you know, whether this is targeting or not. And the defender, the reason why it's not targeting is because the defender didn't lead with his helmet. He was still standing upright, and they met face mask to face mask as he took him to the ground. That's the reason why there was no penalty called on that for targeting. It's when you lower that crown of the helmet uh, purposefully to lodge into, you know, the head and neck area, that crease right in there, that's when you get a targeting penalty. But yeah, Josh Love deserves a lot of credit for being willing to take hit after hit. Yeah, and just trying to hang in the pocket, but... You know, for your offensive line, your offensive line, <laughs> you know, you want to tell them, hey, you need a little bit better blocking up front, guys. I know it's a tough defense. We're late in the football game. We're out of it. But you got to lock in. You got to be focused. As long as we're on the field, you need to play at your best. And, uh, you know, it's a very tough situation. This team's put it, proposition they're put into passing in those situations. But got to answer the call. Packer and Roberson, the running backs. Carrillo in the shotgun. Carrillo the throw, and they break it up. It's a good throw right on target, looking for Josh Oliver. And think about this. Carrillo came into this game only having seven pass attempts, and that's his second one. So nine pass attempts, and he, lo he looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean, puts the ball right in the spot. Receiver is able to go for it, but Utah State just rakes it out of his hands at the last second. Fourth down. They'll go for it. coming he gets hit balls out recovered by the Aggies Logan Lee with the recovery and another turnover you knew it if San Jose State wanted to have any chance they were gonna have to win the turnover battle and Utah State winning in every phase of this game and it wasn't even close and Gajkowski brought the pressure let's say heat-seeking missile off the edge from that nickel position and they've had so much success today whether it's been Jontel Rockmore or the guy t coming in for him Baron Gajkowski doing the same work and they've hit home from that nickel blitz position today that's two turnovers from that position It's G Andrew Peasley in the game. So Utah State, no turnover. San Jose State, three turnovers. And you can't they, come up here and expect to win minus three in that column. No, not even close. And that's 20, 26 takeaways on the season for this Utah State defense. Well, they're finally starting to use the play clock yeah. a little bit. <laughs> exactly. The tempo has slowed down. Mercy. <laughs> yeah. I think they'd still like at least 66. I mean, I would too. Just just make that number when you have to go into Boise, not as high. Beasley. <laughs> little hot What's sauce. Up? Yeah. A little hot sauce on that one. A little fake. And he almost juked himself, yeah, he though. He almost gave the ball up. That goes, pulls, defensive end closes. Quarterback should pull. And take it out the back door, and what a great play by Peasley. But Peasley could have had a lot more yards if he didn't trip. Still got 23. Yeah, not bad Not at bad all. for the freshman. And we've now gotten the 700 yards offense, correct? Uh, and then some close? 720. Yeah, there we go. There we go. New record. New record. New record. Utah State, <laughs> they set this record just two weeks ago. So <laughs> didn't last long. And again, I mean... What's up, Andrew Peasley? Hey, listen, you have to do something different. You have to separate yourself. You can't be Jordan Love. You can't but do the same thing that he's doing. Sophomore. You can't do the same. You got you to create your own niche. His niche is when I come in this game, defensive end closes, I'm pulling it out the back door, and I'm not sliding. He's been, he's been head first both times on his runs. Because if you're a freshman, you got to figure the only chance I'm starting 
before two more seasons after this is if Jordan Love leaves after his junior year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I didn't get the red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> This time it's Justin Hervey. Five yard game. All right, so just, just to put this out there, Utah State does play Alabama in 2020 when Love will be a senior if he's here. If he's here. It's at in Al at Alabama? Okay. That's that's tough. Yeah, that's tough one. And you won't have all these seniors <laughs> that you've no. been playing with. By that time, but look, they may have crop. recruited some studs after players watch what they're doing right now. That that is true, right? Just pray they're I mean, not on their they're mission on the trip. Map though. With teams, if they make that New Year's Day bowl, players that wouldn't have even thought about Utah State could be coming here. That that is very true. And you see Jalen Green already grad transferring yeah. over from USC from a big Power Five program. And it's Peasley again, and Peasley still going. Oh, but then he gave up the ball. Oh, goodness, but they recover it. They're saying he was down by contact, no fumble. I mean, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling down. Andrew Peasley. Peasley. Listen, I'm not going to get into any passing records, but at least I can take the quarterback rushing record, maybe. <laughs> I got to feel like Chuck Keaton put it out there pretty far. Yeah, I, I, I believe so as well. To. But he's a freshman. At least you're yep. trying to get some stats in yeah. there <laughs> during your freshman year. Take some time off the clock. Burning it down. This will be one of, I think, Utah State's longest drives. Well, we know they had an, at least an 88-yard drive because we saw that 88-yard <laughs> touchdown to Darwin Thompson. This one seems easy. But they pick it up at about the four, five-yard line? Yeah. Um, they went no. for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Ball yeah. was fumbled. Oh, yeah, but the fumble right. was out a little further. Yeah, fumble was out a little bit further. Maybe another 88-yard drive. Yeah, might not. They're up to 765 yards in total offense. That's that's just absurd that we're talking about that. <laughs> and I feel like I just wanted to say to Matt Wells, like no matter what happens, congratulations. Did anyone's ever had a team this good for this long to get to nine and one? No, I mean this is just absolutely impressive. And he'd be the only person outside of Nick Saban you could say that to. Which brings me to another question I wanted to get to. Okay. Now. Someone asked how much Doug Taylor wonder how much longer do you think that Utah State can keep Matt Wells as their head coach? And here's what I say. I don't think it's an issue because Matt Wells played here. This is home. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he wants it. to go anywhere. He might get a new contract. Yeah. He might get paid more. I, I don't would think say he wants so. to leave. Yeah, no, and that's one of the things. It's so it's so tough because when a coach comes back to his alma mater, that's usually your natural progression. You go out there, you go into the world, you discover what you want to know about yourself and right. what you want to establish and bring it back home and start building your program and with that pride and being a hometown guy. And yeah, I don't see him wanting to leave the state of Utah, especially not at Utah State. Beasley keeps the play alive. This guy's unbelievable. Oh, it's incomplete for down. But a far better question might be, since we're in total agreement Wells isn't going anywhere, David Yost, their outstanding offensive coordinator, putting up numbers this program's ever seen. Now, if you're a Power 5 conference looking for an offense coordinator, he's going to be a very hot commodity. He's going to be an extremely hot commodity, and he has the resume. He yeah. did it at Oregon. He came here and just pretty much exploded yeah. every record at Utah State. So he's a guy I can see. You're a slumping Pac-12 team that needs a, 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 a jolt, and I think David Yost is that guy that's going to come in. So I think I could see a lot of the California schools. I wouldn't be surprised if... UCLA, a Cal, or, or a USC would, wouldn't come calling. 23-yard field goal there for Dominic Everly, and the score is now 62 to 17 with 8:37 to go. Danny, what do you got? Hold on. I just want to take a check in here and look at this anniversary pick. Kimmy Chow, her and her husband celebrating her 56th anniversary, cheering on number 13 Hextel. Guys, congratulations. Happy anniversary. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Now I've got a question here for Ari, Max, and all our viewers because it's time for another thumbs up, thumbs down, and we're going to take a little bit of a national scope here in college football. Looking at the college football playoffs, is it inevitable that it's going to be Clemson, Alabama in the final at this point? 
Thumbs up or a thumbs down? I'm going to have to go thumbs up, even though I want to see somebody else in the national championship. I don't want to see a replay again of last year or the year before. I want right. to see somebody else in there uh, instead of a rubber match between two Titans. I'd like to see a Notre Dame or a Michigan. They could mix it in there and play and just throw a whole snafu into it. Boo! Thumbs down. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I've seen that show already twice. I don't need to see the third version of it. I want to yeah. see somebody else in that game. I can't stand Notre Dame, and I'd rather Notre Dame get into it. Yeah, I mean, and that's the tough thing. You look at the other teams that are there, you know, you usually say, hey, the five and six have made it the last three yeah. out of the four years. So it's it's tough to say, but I think they're on a collision course. Come on, with me. Okay. I hate to Boo. tell you guys, but Boo. I don't think it's about who you want to watch. <laughs> I think it's about who gets there. Yeah, I mean, we think they might get However, there, but we just don't want to see. My thoughts matter. <laughs> I'm going to give this one a thumbs down, and here's why. I think Alabama has to go in and beat a Georgia team. If they lose to Georgia on December 1st, and everybody else plays out and wins it. I don't think it's inevitable necessarily, but uh, yeah, guys, I really don't think it has anything to do with what you want to watch <laughs> versus but, that. But it's going to happen again. That's how it happened last year. They, they lose Georgia, and then they end up playing Georgia in the national championship game. It's like, come on. I mean, I, I, I just, it's so tough. Alabama's so good, and then you look at Clemson, their offense is just unstoppable. Defense, ah, it's okay, but their offense is so explosive. I feel like it is another collision course, sadly. So now you're thumbs up. No, I'm still thumbs down. <laughs> I don't want to see it. So we Once again, it's not about what you want to see. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, he's his own person, Danny. Can he do it every Yeah, is he on the committee? And he's by far the biggest guy in the group. So yeah. I think Max can do it every once. Hey, I lift a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Harbaugh. Beat Urban <laughs> so you can go in the Big Ten Championship and get a good seat. Jeez. Um, but that was fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting to see when we get that Big 12 guy in there that can actually do something. You know, when's Texas going to get back on the board? Okay. Well, John Claybrooks, if you didn't know, our outstanding producer, he's Laminator. a Texas guy. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a tough time to be a Cowboys fan. It's a tough time to be it's a Longhorns fan. It's a tough time it's to tough. root for anything in the state of yeah, Texas. Yeah, it is. It's been a rough go. I know. The Astros, we thought, had a shot, and that was short-lived. The Beantown boys went and... Carrillo, and look at this. Taking the distance, it's Trey Walker. Touchdown, Spartans. Carrillo to Walker, 75 yards. And just when you thought there was not a lot of offense left in this football game, we still have plenty left, and we still have 826 on the clock. Uh, the yards that are being piled up by both of these teams is pretty impressive. And what a, what a quick strike. And Trey Walker has had just a really good game today and capped off with that. You look at where the offense has had to produce, and it's been Trey Walker, Trey Hartley, and Josh Oliver um, on the receiving side. Let's take another look at this, and Walker just threading the needle between two defenders. He had one pressed on the line and then one double covering off the edge. He sidesteps one and runs past the other one. And with that, 154 yards receiving for Trey Walker in this football contest. We have seen some offense. So 346 offensive yards for San Jose State, 767 for Utah State. Well over almost 1,100 11, yards, 11 yards yeah. of offense. And, and we've we got still 826. Got yeah, this, is, this has been just absolutely fun to watch. I know the score looks slanted, but for everybody at home, if you wanted to see some offense today and see explosive plays, both sides have given you plenty to, to enjoy during this football contest. Everybody said this is going to be a, a slumping weekend for college football, no big matchups, but I tell you what, there's no shortage of offense and explosive plays and, you know, your alma maters, even though you say, hey, I'm watching San Jose State, they're getting blown out. They're still doing it in a very impressive fashion with the way that they're scoring. I think they'd go for an onside kick. I think with the way the speed of this game is going, <laughs> it doesn't matter because it's one explosive play from getting the ball back from either side. 
It's true. Well, let's see if we can get our Peasley into the end zone with his with his dancing feet. I mean, he's done a great job that last drive, uh, those big play rushes. So let's see what he has for another drive. He's already second on the team in rush yards today with 67. That's, yeah. <laughs> Your backup quarterback second on the team. Four in carries for 67 yards, averaging 16.8 yards per carry. It's Justin Hervey. Justin Hervey. And can they use all the play clock? I mean, exactly. <laughs> Take it to one. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah, you you know, you, there's no need to leave double-digit numbers on the play clock right now. <laughs> right. I mean, there's 28 seconds on the play clock. And okay, going. there you go. Calm down. <laughs> okay, thank you. Nobody needs a four-hour football game. We've seen plenty. We know what. We know that you're very good. Yeah, we know how this feels. <laughs> I've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> UNLV was ahead for about a half a minute last time I was here, and it ended up this ugly. And that's a first down. Compton with the first down reception. Keep the sticks moving. But the one thing I, I do and, you know, I do take solace with is if you're a Utah State team, the invaluable experience your younger guys are getting by playing in these football contests, um, just because you never know when injuries are going to strike and you're getting these guys meaningful game time reps and getting them prepared for if anything happens. So I do like the fact that they pull the starters, allow these backups to get in here and find their groove and play together. Because you think about this, there's a lot of seniors who are going to be leaving after this year. So you want to have experience on your side going into next season. This is a number you don't often see. Total yards for Utah State, 777. That is a lucky number. Yeah. I need that as a slot machine. <laughs> And Peasley <laughs> loses another defender. And wasn't he way past the line of scrimmage? <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Flag was thrown. I mean, he was three or four yards past. You can't contain hot sauce, Ari. <laughs> Shake and bake. <laughs> he thought he was still behind the line. The illegal four pass, number six, offense. Five yard penalty from the spot of, that, of the foul. Loss of down. Third down. David Yost, he is the magician behind this incredible offense. Probably like, yes, yeah, sir. I didn't coach him up on that. Yeah, we didn't go over that this week, but if you look at it. He can't. He doesn't have much to complain about. That's probably the only thing he can complain about. That and outside of the slow start at the beginning with the uh, fumble snap. Well, that's a free play, free play here. here. And Peasley's going to go for it. Wing it deep. Don't worry, guys. You're going back for another play. But yeah, that's the one thing. And that's also another thing. If you're a defense going against a new quarterback, sides, number that snap count defense, gets, gets five more penalty, difficult replay, because you're trying to hone down. in and trying to catch his cane so you can get a great jump. But switching up a quarterback when you've been playing against Jordan Love for three quarters and then you get Peasley who might throw in a little kind of uh, synaptic twist in the way that he presents his uh, snap count makes it very tough. you got to watch the football. Third down, they give it to Walker, and Walker will not get it. Clock will keep ticking. What do you do here in fourth and three? When you're uh, up 62 to 24. I've never had to coach in this situation. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pooch punt. Yeah, just, just punt it out there. <laughs> but let the clock run. Great job by Walker to turn himself back inside instead of running to the sideline and potentially stopping the clock. Trail back at his own 17 yard line, hoping for a chance at a return. The 
Looks like we got Zach Lee in, the backup punter. Everybody's been replaced. Backup punter in the contest as well. Backup punters don't play much. No, they don't. They don't. Time out on the field. They're usually just like a holder. You know, that's usually how they get their participation. Let's go see what's next. What does Danny have for us? Well, I have Utah State's team chaplain here. Tojo is what you go by. I love that. And I read somewhere that you said that you are one of the most unique chaplains that anybody will run into. Why do you say that? Well, because I really take care of these kids. I get involved in their personal lives. I go to court with them if I have to. I'll see them in the hospital either before or after their surgeries. And at the same time, I will fire them up in the locker room to get them prepared for a football game. I mean, I, I do the whole thing because this is my alma mater. Well, I love that, and it's your alma mater. Well, Sister Jean became super famous watching Loyola Chicago in, in the NCAA tournament. Kind of just that whole chaplain and having somebody around. What is it that you do for these players? What I do is uh, I will calm their nerves, and if they have problems and situations, personal problems at home, I'll pray with them, I'll encourage them in the Lord, and I'll just make sure that they know that they have a foundation in Christ because that's the first and foremost I want them to have a relationship with the Lord. And a lot of different things happen, I mean, throughout a season, throughout a year. I know you and I just off camera were talking about a situation uh, with Mo Alexander that we uh, we interviewed him at the ha halftime. Um, you're here for deaths in the family. You're here for, you know, uh, a broken bone, all those types of things. What are some of those uh, relationships that stand out to you? Um, just when they lose a parent, I've had two players uh, this year lose their fathers. And, and I had the blessed opportunity to encourage them and to remind them that their father's blood runs through their body and their dad is always with them. And so what you can do is take a sad situation and remind the players that something positive is going to result from this simply because of who you are. And I know it's incredible. It really is. Just tremendous. Two of them. Two, two deaths. Oh, my gosh. It's so sad. And before the game, I attended the funeral of a former Aggie who played here in the 70s. I know. So I was at that funeral, and then I drove here in time. Been, been a part of this team for a long time. Just great what you do. I think, Thanks so much for joining us on this broadcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for what you do. Oh, thank you. And, guys, if you're watching this game, now is about the time where I need you to tell me who you think is going to be your Facebook player of the game. So let me know right now in the comments. Is it Jordan Love? Is it Darwin Thompson? Who are we thinking today? I mean, when you have a game with two quarterbacks the last name Love, doesn't the Facebook player of the game have to be a love? It has to be a love. I mean, at this point, it's a love fest. Oh, he does it again. Oh. I mean, this guy, <laughs> Trey Walker's numbers, I can't wait for our stat monitor thing to check in because his yards per catch was 30.8 going into that catch. And this was another 48-yarder. So he has over 200 yards receiving in this contest. Yeah, 202 yards receiving, two touchdowns. He's averaging 33.7 yards per catch. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is crazy. We're almost at 1,200 yards of total offense. This is, this is awesome. This is awesome, by the way. Just make sure they stay in bounds. That's the only other thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to slow the game down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, we have a player down. Hold on. And that. I can't see the number. I know it has a 20 as a running back. I couldn't see who that is that's down for San Jose State. All right, well, unfortunately, we've seen too many guys banged up. But the good news is it seems like everybody who was banged up got up and was able to come back in the game. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. And that's Packer down right now, one of the backup running backs for San Jose State. Who, look, all things considered, I know we've had a lot of laughs here about all the offense, but the Spartans have given great effort today. I got no problem with how hard they've played, the game plan. I, I, I mean, they got 24 points against a very good defense. They got seven points off special teams. So they got some things to build on. Yeah, they have some very good things. And like we said, they, they progressed. 
from the season. So don't let the one and eight record kind of fool you. This team was a high turnover team that Coach Brennan took over, and he's had to build it from the ground up. So, yeah, they're a couple years away, but you're seeing progress. Like you said, you look at what the quarterbacks are doing, your wide receiving core, your tight end. So you have some great things to build upon. It's just you're probably a year or two out of really being a, a big-time player in the Mountain West. Yeah. Well, what a year it's been, bringing home the hardware. So the old wagon wheel, they take down BYU, 45-20. to 20. The Bridgers battle October 20th, they defeat Wyoming, and the Beehive boot played between the four Utah Division I schools, and that's decided at the end of the season. Uh, look, <laughs> and it was also senior day today, a very special senior day for these 25 seniors. Ron Kavian Tarver, what a three years he's had coming from junior college and having the career he's put up. Yeah. Great job. Quinn, Quinn Ficklin. Ficklin, the BYU transfer. Who would have thought when he left BYU he'd been like, I'm going to the better team in Utah. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to a real Utah school to play football. Christiansen. Rockmore. And who had a tremendous game today. I mean, he's been great all season. Yeah. Gage Ferguson. Another one. That's nice. I'm glad we got that in. Thanks, everybody in the truck for getting that in. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I want to acknowledge those key seniors. We talked about those guys at our production meeting slash dinner. I like how we set that up. Yeah, that was, that was a fun time. We get a lot of work done, too. Yep. Carrillo, and it's complete. Watch out if that guy's got it. That's going to ruin his yards per catch. It is. <laughs> he, he's going to take a dent. It's going to go down to 30 after that one. But, yeah, Trey Walker again. If you're just tuning into the broadcast, you haven't watched it. Trey Walker is a receiver for San Jose State. <laughs> and I would say, if you're just tuning in, I told you that he had seven catches for 207 yards and two touchdowns. You might think that San Jose State was winning. Yeah, you would if you were looking at an individual isolated <laughs> right. stat. But if you were watching the bottom line that didn't have to score and it just started to show It was just showing like fantasy production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would be leading like for receptions, but then you have to look at the quarterback for the other team <laughs> and his numbers. And a rare kind of mix up there. You saw Carrillo, he wanted to hand the ball off and Gatskowski meets in the backfield and it kind of just, him and the running back kind of just fall down together for a, for a loss. And at this point, yes, you go for it on fourth down. You have nothing to lose. They pick up the blitz, but they can't make the catch. Trey Hartley can't make the catch. Here's a, here's a stunning development. Our Facebook player of the game is Utah State starting quarterback Jordan Love. He, just an average game. 32 of 42 for 491 yards. Passer rating of 213.7. I've never seen one that high. And, and five touchdowns. He also runs for a touchdown. That could put him over. That could put him over. I think that's what gave him <laughs> yeah. the go-ahead vote. And the fact that he did not see the rest of the third quarter and none of the fourth quarter. No. He's only played the fourth quarter of four of their ten games. That, that, that's just, yeah. That, that, that was a no-brainer with the way that he's played all season and tonight. Holy goodness. They're going deep. <laughs> Easily he's thrown it downfield to Devin just, Tompkins. What in the 700 is yards on? is not enough, Ari. Well, they're at 779. If you're going to put the record out there, get you to might, like 850. You might as well. And, and that was clearly showing that they wanted to go for over 800. Now, the most yards in FBS football this year by any team is 826. Sadly, that's still in reach right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With 310 left in the football Look, game. they drive at 50 yards here. <laughs> yeah. And Peasley was showing a lot of gusto on, on that throw, so. Probably another throw downfield here. Oh no, handoff. El Toro Allen. El Toro Allen on the carry. It took him over 780 yards of offense on that rush. <laughs> oh, right at, I'm sorry, right at 780. Uh, they currently have rush. him at 779, sir. Oh. <laughs> 
It was 7 77. It was a three yard gain. I mean, you think the home statisticians would be on that. Come right? on, stat broadcast. I need you to pick it up. You missed a yard. Oh, that was the previous play. We're at 783. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he gave him a yard. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and seven, but. Okay. Just tack it on. How about the patience from El Toro Allen? It's another first down. I mean, now I want him to get the record. Yeah, I mean, me too. I, I'm rooting for it. You know, just one bomb to like the 20-yard line, and we can put it to bed. So I'm just asking you. You can tell me I'm crazy, but when are when are throwing passing plays or doing things? Does it get to the point of you've gone too far in a game like this with this much time left? I'm just wondering if there could be bad blood in the future as a result of some of these play calls. Well, I, I think yeah, we're, we're we were beyond that when Peasley threw that one bomb the first play. Well, that, uh, that was pretty shocking. Yeah, that was pretty shocking. And at this point, yeah, it, it's okay to see the horizontal passing game. When you start going vertical like that, above 10 to 15 yards, that's what's like you're picking us. But you look at last year's game, it was a 61 to 10 tilt. So no surprise <laughs> that they're still going for it. But I am surprised. I'm glad they're chewing up clock, but this team yeah. is so explosive. They could take a screenplay that could go the same distance as throwing the ball downfield. For sure. And look, I, I have the utmost respect for Matt Wells, and he may never have a team this good again. And you, you want to do special things. You want to have great records. I was just wondering at what point is it disrespectful to the other team? And I don't know where that place is in the game, Yeah. but it's worth considering. It's 62-24 with 62 seconds, and it looks like you're still trying to move the football. Yeah, it does. And I mean, think about this. You're on your third string quarterback right now. So I think you've kind of conceded as far as we'll put our third string quarterback in our entire second team in. And, you know, we want to see what this kid has as well, because he's a freshman. He's competing yep. with Columbia. Um, so, yeah, you got you to put some of those plays on tape. But it, as long as they're not throwing that consistently downfield, they're not looking to go consistently downfield, I think it's okay. Allen gets another first down. That's actually a stat I haven't done much today. It was just first downs. That's the 33rd first down of the That's game. That's a lot of first downs. <laughs> now let's see if they'll take a knee. Can they take a knee now? Can we go six tight diamond or what I call yep. victory formation? It's everybody's favorite play call. Yeah, on the winning side. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Just don't back up. Just take the knee immediately. Don't back up and lose yardage. That's my that was my one pet peeve as offensive lineman. So when the quarterback takes, you lose three yards of offense. Taking a knee. And the one thing we used to do was uh, Ben Roethlisberger famously on our offensive line. He knew when we wanted to keep the rushing numbers high, we would actually step forward so he could take a knee on the line of scrimmage. 806 total yards of offense, a new school record today. And they were and they were close to the FBS record for this year. 826. Yeah, 20 yards shy, think about that. 20 yards, that's all they were missing. I'm glad that I told Matt Wells at the end of the call, I said, look, this is the best team I've seen in my 10 years in the Mountain West. That's the most yards since 2000 in a Mountain West game. 804 today, I mean. And 100 yards <laughs> over that New You know, Mexico because I always think you have to be careful that you don't fall in love with the team you've seen most recently. That you, you yeah. know, that you think, give yourself perspective on other great teams. But man, watching this Utah State team just crush people. I, I wish it was a year where maybe they had a second big time non-conference foe that they could have taken down. Maybe yeah. a home and home had somebody here. Yeah. They might be in the top 10. Yeah, and easily. I mean, you look at how this team is. They're not playing like, oh my goodness, they're, you know, the best of the group of five. They could take down legitimate. Like, imagine this. If Michigan State was switched back later in the season when they got their groove, I don't think Michigan State beats them. Even they're playing it at Michigan nope. State. I think, I think they beat Michigan State handedly. Yeah. Well, if they played 10 times, Utah State's winning seven. No question. No question about it. They're and a better football team than Michigan State this year, period. End of story. I mean, Final score here, 62 to 24. And frankly, they could have gone for more than 70 points easily. Yeah. They left points out there on the board, on the field. You think about Everly, kicks his. This is a 65 point contest. Makes that one at the end of the half. Yep. Hit the goalpost. Yeah, hit the goalpost. It was close. Had plenty of distance. 
what a, what a senior day. Let's go to Danny. All right, coach, you've got over 800 total yards in this game on offense, 33 first downs. Is there anything that can surprise you at this point about your offense? No, you just want to play a lot cleaner. You know, obviously, like we said earlier in the game, and then there was some stuff in the second half. Um, you know, that's the scary thing is I still don't think, and neither do the players, that we played our most complete game yet. So, uh, but we played well. I'm happy for our guys. And you go undefeated at home, that's a really uh, special deal for the seniors. Scary thing to think that you haven't played your best game yet. But speaking of those seniors, what can you say about just that group in general? Because this day was about them. It's all about them. And, you know, that was something that we set out to do is go 6-0 and at home. And um, anytime you can do that, you got a chance to have a special year. So we continue to put ourselves, you know, after six rounds, six, six weeks in the Mountain West, continue to put yourself in a chance to compete. And we'll go try to do it again next week and then the week after. Ranked 14th nationally, and I know you don't pay too much attention, don't really want to talk about those rankings, so I'm not going to. What I'm going to ask you is what can you say about your team showing up every single week in that professional approach that they take no matter who the opponent is? Yeah, just proud of them and their preparation. It's been really good, and they, they've been practicing really hard and giving themselves a chance to deserve victory on Saturday. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. Great job, Danny. A really great hustle throughout the game from Danny. Really appreciate it. Uh, and a big, big thanks to our entire crew. Uh, we've been out here three times uh, that I've been a part of, and it's been fun. On behalf of my broadcast partners, Danny Kleppinger and Max Starks, I'm Ari Wolf saying goodnight from Logan, Utah. Final score 62 24 for more live games, replays, and classic games. And daily original studio programming. Visit watchstadium.com or search stadium in your local channel guide. Take care, everybody.